up. Every day is game day. Off my third contract, you still on that same play. I spit it out, but I got family sitting chain lace. Oh, you about that action? Tell them boys you about the same thing. Lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back, but I'm gonna ride for my people. And once I take the stage, I'ma start like evil can evil. I built the conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito. And once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the eye of fell. Swear to man, become heroes of in the end. It's an Easter Sunday in the desert as year three of Nighthawk football gets underway at home this afternoon from the Dollar Loan Center in Henderson. The Nighthawks fresh off an upset win on the road against Arizona to kick off their season last week. Take on the Jacksonville Sharks. Hi, everybody. Welcome inside the Dollar Loan Center. Alongside Justin Russo, I'm Ben Wilson. Mariah Janos, the third member of our team, joins us in just a couple minutes. Highest expectations by far in Nighthawk franchise history as they enter year three. Justin, they got off to a pretty good start to match those expectations with an upset win last week. Yeah, a great game last week. A game-winning kick at the end to, to boot and for the Vegas Nighthawks looking to translate that into their home arena today. 11-20 and 20 for the first two seasons for head coach and GM Mike Davis. He brought in a bunch of big-time returners this season. The team is very high on. Seven of them come back from last season who really are the anchors of this team. Joe Mancuso is a backup quarterback, but the two top returning wide receivers, Quentin Randolph and Caleb Holly, each return. And the defensive stalwart of the team who missed last week is back in the lineup in Gabe McCoy. It's partially, though, building an anchor of your franchise. Justin, it's all about some key additions coming in to Vegas for the first time. Three big ones on both sides of the ball and the coaching staff. The big one we'll talk about a lot today is the quarterback, Jerome Johnson, who was exceptional last week. Yeah, a couple of guys on the offensive side, of course, hurt his chin coming over, former IFL Coach of the Year last season, really helping this offense out to 45 points. And as you mentioned, Jerome Johnson, a dual threat guy who was able to do it with his legs and through the air last week. You see the read option there, and he just takes off. He has the speed to go down and get right into the heart of the defense. But he can also air it out there. A deep shot there, and Caleb Hawley hauling that one in. He's doing it in both ways, and right now for this Vegas Nighthawks offense, it, it just had so many dimensions for them. Just named IFL Player of the Week as a result. Six total touchdowns. Now he has his home debut coming up next. It's the Sharks and the Nighthawks right after this. Beautiful. Up to you, Fields. Good.
Back inside the Dollar Loan Center, it's the 1-0 Vegas Nighthawks against the 0-1 Jacksonville Sharks. Week 3 in the IFL, Game 2 for both teams. The Sharks win the toss, they defer to the second half. And so, Justin, we'll get our first look at Jerome Johnson and the Nighthawk offense first for their head coach and GM, Mike Davis, who has a whole lot of expectations. This team was picked fifth in the preseason poll, highest they've ever been picked to start an IFL season. Yeah, a really great opportunity this season for Mike Davis to, to really try to get to the pinnacle of the IFL. And we saw the foundation of that last week with Jerome Johnson doing it in both ways offensively. It's Frankie Onate who has it up on the tee. Year three at home for the Nighthawks is underway as Onate hits the underside of the roof. That happens a lot for visiting kickers. We watched Onate practice those kicks for about a solid half hour in pregame. <laughs> and yet the adrenaline gets the best of you hit the underside of the roof. And the Nighthawks will have solid field position to start this game. As we're underway, they'll start at their own 20. It's the high-scoring nature of the IFL, 50-yard narrow field. And Jerome Johnson, he really excels in this format as a guy who can burn you on the ground but also kill you over the top with the arm. Yeah, we saw it in our open. The read option was deadly for him last week in Arizona. Interesting to see how Jacksonville comes out and how they want to defend him because do you want to take away the run and give him the pass or do you want to take away that pass and force him to beat you with his legs? Well, here we go, a fresh home slate for the Nighthawks. If you're new to the IFL, a lot of forward motion on basically every snap. Two and forward motion at the right here, and it is a first down pass knocked away in the secondary. Great play made by Jabari Corman, the National Arena League Defensive Player of the Year a season ago, and that's the big question now for Jacksonville, Justin. They come over from the National Arena League. They were defending champs of that league, moved to the IFL. Everybody wondering, okay, how will that transition go now in year one? Yeah, and you know, this is a team, even though they're switching over leagues here, they do have some experience on that defensive side. You mentioned Gorman with that pass breakup and the pedigree that he brings over. A strong start for him. One of four returners for this Jacksonville Sharks defense that won that league a season ago. Big step up, though, from the NAL to the IFL as Johnson takes the shotgun. Snap high. Throw is brought down. Torian Taylor burrows down for a pickup of seven. He's making his Nighthawk debut. was inactive last week, but... He gets his first start along with Jonathan Johnson who only played on special teams last week for the Nighthawks So there are a couple guys we're seeing now for the first time and an early third and short Which is where the Nighthawks really excelled last week They did a great job staying in front of the chains as part of that big upset when they were two touchdown underdogs to Arizona Getting off that upset and yeah, they did everything they could last week to put themselves in a position to win and early on here facing some adversity on this third down First drive of the game for the Nighthawks Back to the read option. It's Johnson gets to the boundary and leans the ball into the wall. First down, Nighthawks as he does just it up. A four-yard pickup on third and four and a half. And that's where he can beat you with his legs. But again, with the read option, they give the look where you have to keep yourself honest. You have to make sure you have the edge contained there with Taylor. And then Johnson with his legs swooping around the right side and able to pick up the first down. That's been an interesting journey for Jerome Johnson to get to Vegas. He played for the Arkansas Attack in the Major League Football League, one of about a dozen small semi-pro leagues around the country. His second year now in the IFL. And a good start for the Nighthawks after the third down pickup. Johnson, clean pocket, deep shot, end zone, broken up. Beautiful play at the last second by Harrison Poole, who came out of nowhere to knock that away from Johnson. And Poole is another guy that was strong last week for this Sharks team because he had nine tackles to lead the way. But again, another pass breakup. And Jerome Johnson over on the other end to Jonathan Johnson. That's the second time we've seen Jonathan with a, a target and a pass broken up coming his way. And Jonathan Johnson, one of those seven returners, even though he didn't start last week, he's been a useful piece off the bench. A great speed guy. was a former track and field athlete at Morgan State before playing football in college where he finished his career at Richmond. It's a second and ten Nighthawks. Give to Taylor his first carry in the IFL. Torian Taylor, one of several rookies on this roster. It's a unique mix this year, Justin, of vets plus rookies for the Nighthawks. Taylor, they really love his quick first step burst, and he gets a six-yard pickup as the Nighthawks look to go quick. And yeah, going up-tempo here on this third down. Let's see what they come up with. Opening drive for Vegas into the red zone for the first time this season. It's a read option. Keeper Jerome Johnson again to the boundary, but he doesn't get there. Forced into the wall. Nicely done and contained. As Jeremiah Price, who is in his 10th year as an indoor football slash arena football pro, makes that stop in an early decision. You expect the Nighthawks to go for this here, though, fourth and two at the 10. Yeah, fourth and short, a big opportunity to keep the offense on the field here. And, you know, Jeremiah Price on that other end on the edge. We saw the read option go to the right. This time they try it to the left, and he's not fooled on the keeper. It's fourth and a long one, need about the eight and a half yard line. You saw the first year offensive coordinator, Herta Shin, 
who is the on-field coach, gives the play to Jerome Johnson, youngster out of Washington, D.C. Blitz comes, quick throw, broken up. Jacksonville brings pressure. Jordan Cole almost gets to the quarterback, and the Jacksonville Sharks get the first stand of this game. That's yeah, so the third target going over to Jonathan Johnson. A quick out to the right side and another pass breakup on that right side by Harrison Poole. He had the one in the end zone earlier. Now he gets the key stop on fourth down and a big stop for this Sharks defense. The Sharks, we told you, coming off a loss to begin the season. Defense, though, is not the issue. They did a really good job. Only gave up 26 points, which is very little in the IFL, but offensively is where they had their struggles. Only mustered 21 points, about five yards per play, and under 200 yards of offense in a five-point loss to Massachusetts last week. You figure defense will be solid. This is the big question mark, though, for Connor Blunt in the offense as he hands it off to the right side. Cameron Solomon shot down, and a nice play by the Newcomer on the defensive front is the starting linebacker, Mikel Calhoun, one of four starters without any pro experience who are in the starting line for the Nighthawks. Yeah, nice tackle there as they're looking to get the run game going. This Sharks team, you mentioned they only scored 21 points last week. They only had 41 yards on the ground, so they really couldn't establish the run in any way, and they're trying to do it there with their first play. So just underway, first drive for Jacksonville after they stop Vegas on downs to begin the game. 10.30 to go in the first quarter. Nighthawks about a touchdown favorite in this game as Connor Blunt the Waukesha Wisconsin native he started the year for Jacksonville at quarterback last year before an injury as he hands off again left side big hit outside the numbers great job by Jerry Garner who came off the bench last week He's filling in, has big shoes to fill because Maurice Jackson, the best defensive player, got hurt last week and is out today. Yeah, certainly shoes to fill there, but Garner and Malik Harris both in on that stop and just the run defense so far for the Nighthawks been strong through two plays. And again, the struggles on the ground for this Sharks team. You have to figure they're going to go to the air here. and Let's see if Connor Blunt can figure something out on third down. They give to Logan Wright going nowhere. It was a run defense, the worst in the IFL last year for Vegas. A big point of emphasis in the offseason. On third and long, Blunt's clean pocket, airs it out, one-on-one, -on -one, deep downfield, it's knocked away. Roderick Chapman, the best DB on the roster. When you talk to the coaching staff and a very late flag comes in after he knocks it away, time to see who the late unsportsmanlike contact foul goes against, but a great play in coverage by Chapman. Yeah, they took a shot on third down. And Chapman just stuck with the receiver the entire way and was able to break After it up. The Let's play, see what the penalty a is. sportsman line conduct, number 16 of the defense. It's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's DJ Ford. Chapman was the guy who broke it up. And as we get another look, we'll see if we can pick up what happened here. A deep shot down the right sideline again. Chapman in stride with the receiver the entire way, breaks him up right into the corner of the end zone. and. Something there happened with DJ Ford after jawing uh, at, at one of the Sharks players, it seems, and results in a fresh set of downs for Jacksonville. Massive penalty because in the IFL, you can't punt. Jacksonville would have had to line up for a field goal try from about 60 yards, basically, the length of the field, or go for it. Instead of fresh set of downs on their first drive, it's a pitch right side and a big hit once again by Malik Harris. Booms Logan right to the turf. We have a lot of jawing going on already. Right back at it, DJ Ford jawing with Tamori on Terry, the receiver for Jacksonville. Something to watch down the line here. Of course, you want to keep yourself in check. There's a lot of emotions running with the home opener, but you can't hurt your team. And to your point, penalties are so much more magnified in this league because of how short the field is. And you already see the Sharks on the other side in plus territory. Well, Mike Davis told us even though his team got the win last week, they made so many little mistakes. Easily could have won that game by more against Arizona. We're wanting to shore some of those things up as it's a Jacksonville second and long. Blunt with a blitz comes, throws a wobbler that is caught. Is it hung on to into the wall? You can do that. You can go over the wall and make a catch into the stands in the IFL. And the officials say no, it was not secured by Solomon. Uh, easier said than done, though, Justin, when you go into the wall to try to make a catch. Oh, yeah. A great effort here as he dives over. His legs chip the wall and he flies over and yeah, just loses it at the end there. A little shoved by Caesar to, to try to make sure that ball comes out. And... Incomplete at the end of the day for the Sharks. Yeah, you can, as long as you have some sort of contact with the side of the wall, you can make a catch going into the stands. It's just, you have to fight with some fans to do so. <laughs> Third and long for the Sharks on their opening drive. Blitz comes by Calhoun. High throw, tap, it's intercepted. It's the Vegas kid, Bryce Hampton. Welcome to the Nighthawks in his home debut as Vegas gets the first turnover of the game. 
Oh, Blunt had a couple of interceptions last week, and here he makes his first mistake. Nighthawk D showing up big as we step aside. Deadlocked at zeros early on. But the lace up every day is game day off my third pond track you still on that same play i spit it out but i got family sitting chain links oh you about that action tell them boys you about the same thing get your popcorn ready hat me half amazing human highlight reel you gonna see my name in beijing heavy rep i take you'll see the pain that made me this gritty on a gridiron only one of us can stay king touchdown every time i touch down and my deepest shut down every time i touch ground yeah lying harder but i got the eye of an eagle i put the city on my back look i'm gonna ride for my people then once i take the stage We just saw Las Vegas native Bryce Hampton coming up with a massive interception. And this is something he's been working on in practice all week. I was there watching him. He had the assignment of guarding Quinton Randolph and staying on him all practice long. He was really having fun with it, loving the competition there. And I had asked him what separates him from the other DBs. And he says, well, I have experience on the offensive side of the ball. So I can read deep uh, offenses really well and a little bit differently than and other defensive backs who only have experience playing defense. So we certainly saw that there. He was able to read that offense and come up with the pick. Guys. And great insights. Mariah, great to have Mariah back with us on the sidelines for another season and one of two Las Vegas natives in the defensive backfield as Jerome Johnson starts this sequence for the Nighthawks' two-yard loss. And now it's a question of what can you turn this into here for Vegas after their first drive stalled out in the red zone on downs. Nothing, nothing. 6.45 to go first quarter as we're just underway. Johnson feels the blitz off his back foot. Has a man. Oh, and it's dropped in the end zone by Randolph, who had the best game of any Nighthawk wide receiver last week, but should have brought that one in for six. Yeah, had 90 yards and a touchdown last week, and this is going to be one of the ones that he's certainly going to want back. We've saw some pass breakups already today, but this is one that Quentin Randolph needs to haul in for a touchdown here. A great pass in the face of pressure by Jerome Johnson, and it's incomplete. Randolph totally shook off Jabari Gorman, too, which is not easy to do. Last week, Randolph also had a drop in the end zone on his first target, then atoned for it with that big game the rest of the way. Here he tries to atone on a third down run. Will at least try to make this a fourth and manageable for the Nighthawks as he picks up about seven. But it is fourth down and a decision time coming for the Nighthawks. Were they to kick here with new kicker Kevin Macias, it would be... Uh, in the range roughly of about 29 yards, but being that it's fourth and medium, they will go here on a fourth and five. No, I like the aggression. They've had some success, a couple of pass breakups, and of course they had the look that they wanted on that play to Randolph, but just weren't able to haul it in. So I like the aggression here. Need the eight-yard line. Nighthawks just had an incomplete pass on a fourth and one on their first possession. Flag down, looked like an offside. To the end zone, intercepted, but all marks indicate this will be a five-yard penalty. It should stay Nighthawk ball. The real question is they'll probably have to measure. Was it a true fourth and five or was it fourth and five and maybe a couple inches as Gary Reed, our official, gives us the call. Illegal defense, number 99, not in the stands. It's a snap, five-yard penalty, first down, Nighthawks. And Gary does confirm it is a first down for the Nighthawks. Wipes out the Gorman interception. 
pre-shot here from Jerome Johnson. Knew he had an opportunity to go to the end zone once that penalty was there, so he took it, intercepted, but they end up getting the first down at the end of the day. Illegal defense, one of those unique rules to the IFL, where if you are out of your three-point stance at the snap, that is one of several ways that illegal defense can be called, but that's one of them. You can't get a head start at all in the eight-on-eight eight game in the IFL. Both teams on defense making big mistakes to extend drives. And now it's Johnson on first and goal. Taylor works left, cuts inside, and gets down inside the five to about the three. Met there on the inside by Harrison Poole and the big uh, man in the middle, Yurik Jones for Jacksonville. But even going back to the play before that fourth down, I like the opportunity that Hurtis Chin gave to Quentin Randolph in terms of just giving him the ball and maybe building that confidence back a little bit after that drop. So they didn't get the first down, but you want one of your best players to have confidence throughout the remainder of this game. It's a second and goal at the four for the Nighthawks, who scored touchdowns on six of their 11 drives last week in that win at Arizona. Read option. Johnson keeps. Waltz is in. His first home touchdown in a Nighthawk uniform. It's seven TDs in his first eight and a half quarters. That's exactly what we saw last week from Jerome Johnson. The read option and just reading the defense and taking off. And didn't have as far to go as he did on some of those opportunities last week, but tucks it and runs, gets good blocking up front, gets to the edge, and gets in for six. He combined passing and rushing for a cool 295 yards last week. Not bad, especially when you think about how short the field is in the IFL, just 50 yards. He gets the touchdown. It's the new kicker for the Nighthawks, who was the hero last week. Kevin Macias bangs in the extra point, and it's a 7-0 Nighthawk lead looking to go to 2-0 on the young season in the home opener of the Dolly Loan Center. Try your luck for every Nighthawks home game. Scan that QR code right there on your screen and take part in the 52-48 raffle. You can enter each home game's drawing with a chance to win 52% of the evening's total pot while also contributing to benefit the VKH Foundation and their charitable efforts in the Vegas community. Scan the code now. You must be present in Nevada to play. Certainly welcome everybody watching around the country globally on the IFL YouTube channel listening on 1230 the game locally in Las Vegas is the Nighthawks lead 7 nothing solid return right back up the middle for the Jacksonville Sharks and they're do it all wide receiver Cameron Solomon but the early issues for Jacksonville you mentioned it earlier Justin going back to last week now three interceptions thrown by quarterback Connor Blunt and the Nighthawks were able to get the momentum right back after they, after they were shut down on their first drive and now for Vegas, it's about can you build this lead, too, because the more you can build the lead, the more pressure that puts on Connor Blunt. So let's see how he comes out here at his aggression level, and perhaps you can force him into more mistakes now that he's trying to chase the game. Blunt had a great start to the year last year in the National Arena League, then had a season-ending knee injury. You see him with that knee brace on his left knee as he throws to the far boundary, and it's hauled in by Tamorion Terry, who brings in the catch. Those two linking up. Two of five returners back for the Jacksonville Sharks after they went 12 and 3 a season ago. They won the NAL, but it was a weird league last year, Justin. Only five teams actually finished the season. Two had to fold 
mid-year, so that's why understandably people are wondering, okay, how good actually were the Sharks relative to IFL competition? Second and three right now. Second drive for the Sharks. Inside give. Logan Wright stopped short on a nice tackle by Lee Autry, a defensive lineman. The coaching staff is really high on coming in his first year in the IFL after some time in the CFL. Yeah, this reworked Vegas Nighthawks defense. So far, so good in this game. No points allowed to the Jacksonville Sharks. And again, Jacksonville unable to get those first downs on early downs. They're, they're behind the sticks a little bit here. So another third down for them. And they've got to make something happen. After an interception on the opening drive for Jacksonville, Blunt and the Sharks have a third and two near midfield. Blunt over the middle with a flag down. It's caught by the team's leading receiver, the best receiver in the NAL last year, Cameron Solomon, as we wait on the flag coming from the defensive secondary. And we'll wait on Gary Reed, our head ref, to give us the call. Illegal defense, Nighthawks, a foul's decline. Results of the play is first down. That penalty declined as the Sharks pick it up. Well, you talk about struggles for Blunt, Justin, but it certainly helps. You have a guy like Cameron Solomon. He set an NAL single-season receiving catch record. 116 catches. I mean, that's ridiculous in 13 games last year. Yeah, and, and as he struggles, Blunt, you expect him to go to that security blanket. So expect a lot of Cameron Solomon in any form today. Off the first down inside, giving it Solomon now on the ground, corkscrewing his way down to the 10 for a six-yard pickup. That's good for Jacksonville that they have Blunt back healthy after an injury a season ago. He was leading the NAL in pass yardage through four games, 886 yards, 19 touchdowns to four picks. Guy who spent time as a backup at Oregon State, started a few games and finished his career at FCS Eastern Kentucky. And his second season now with the Sharks. Ball the Nighthawk, 10. Inside give, big hit right at the line. Mikel Calhoun in his pro home debut makes the stop, and the Nighthawks force another third down. Yeah, more rushing struggles in the traditional sense. We saw the previous play where Cameron Solomon got the ball, and they're trying to rework some ways to get these guys going on the ground. But again, Logan Wright, a guy that only had 26 rushing yards last week, haven't been able to get him going so far in this game either. Calhoun in that all-important linebacker position in the IFL, responsible for so much in the 8 versus 8 game. Third and four from the 10. Final play of the first quarter as it's a bad snap and they blow it dead. Looked like some early movement before that snap came and the offensive line wasn't totally set. Nick Ruse along Ball with the real Gee. Offense number one, five-yard penalty. We play third down. And because of that... Awkward snap. Terry was well beyond the line of scrimmage, so he's the one who's called for a false start. Yeah, unfortunate there as they were looking to convert on that third down, but it pushes him back even further. You see just a little movement there, and then the bad snap, of course, to come with it. That will do it for the end of the first quarter. A defensive slugfest so far in the normally high-flying offensive action of the IFL. Through 15 minutes, it's the Vegas Nighthawks 7, the Jacksonville Sharks nothing. A big third down when we return. got to be consistent to true to we do, do what we did all that practice every day and just work hard and be on the same page and to stay poised the whole game we're gonna have some highs we're gonna have some lows but make sure we stay consistent through it all what can you say about your defense keeping you guys in this one defense doing a good job since week one they started doing that doing camp as well they playing as a team they playing hard and they making plays for us to get the ball back so they're doing a good job thank you so much thank you
broke through in the scoring. What do you think is the key, has been the key on offense so far going up against this tough defense? This has got to be consistent. So true to we do, do what we did all that practice every day and just work hard and be on the same page. And to stay poised the whole game. We're going to have some highs. We're going to have some lows. But make sure we stay consistent through it all. What can you say about your defense keeping you guys in this one? Defense doing a good job since week one. They started doing that, doing camp as well. They playing as a team. They playing hard. And they making plays for us to get the ball back. So they're doing a good job. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, we start the second quarter, third down and long, and a first down picked up. That was Jonathan Johnson joining our Mariah Janos at the end of the first quarter, but a huge pick up there as the Sharks look to dump it off, and Logan Wright, nice run after the catch to set up first and goal. Yeah, especially after the penalty moved them back on third down. They get Wright coming out of the backfield this time, involved in the passing game, and he's able to tumble forward for the first down. Jacksonville just trying to find their stride on offense only 21 points last week in their IFL debut a loss on the road at Massachusetts down 7 nothing to Vegas as we start the second quarter home opener for the Nighthawks and Blunt goes under center flag down at the snap around left guard right gets in but Mike Davis who's the on-field defensive coach for the Nighthawks immediately signaling that was some illegal motion there it looked like you had a guy going in motion to the Illegal side. Illegal formation, number 18, with three, within three yards of the guard. Five-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, it was Munoz coming in motion there for the Jacksonville Sharks. And as we take a replay here, the big man moving over to his left. And But 18, that's going to be the guy you want to watch. He was lined up too close to that offensive line. You have to be at least three yards outside of the outside shoulder of the guard. First and goal. That's backs up Jacksonville already called for the false start before they picked up a third and nine to start this quarter now a first and goal from the nine Blunt feeling the pressure and just has to throw it away great job by Mikel Calhoun he's so young it's his first year as a pro just but already he has a great feel for how to come at the quarterback with those blitzes where the timing is everything in this league yeah, and you can see right as Blunt was trying to roll out and find his man to extend the play there was Calhoun waiting for him so to your point about the timing Timed it perfectly and was in the right position to defend that pass. Most teams on average score about 40 or so points a game in the IFL. You expect a lot of scoring so far. It's been a slow start. Jacksonville on their second drive of the game with a second and goal at the Nighthawk 9. Blunt hit as he tried to release. Had to tuck it as Calhoun again. Gets the massive hit in the backfield. Oh, right on cue, uh, right on cue for Calhoun. We just talked about his ability to blitz and to time it, and right up the middle, he's able to get the blunt this time. Looking to his left, didn't like what he saw, and then when he turned to the middle, he saw big number 25 coming right down the barrel, and a big sack for this Nighthawks defense. Uh, that'll leave a mark. Mikel Calhoun played six years at FCS Southern Illinois. Didn't play in any pro ball last year. His pro debut, and he has a sack for the second straight game. Third and goal now at the 19. Jacksonville just trying to get themselves in manageable either field goal or go for, go for a range here. Solomon makes the catch a nine yard gain down to the 10. And Jacksonville quickly brings out the field goal unit as Frankie Onate looks to get the Sharks on the board. Fourth and goal from the 10 yard line. Well, the IFL kicking is one of those things, Justin. Easier said than done. It's a very narrow goal post, just nine feet wide. And Onate, his first field goal attempt of the season. He was perfect on PATs last week. And he broke the backup quarterback to hold. It's a good snap. Hold is down, and that kick is true. Jacksonville on the board, but the Nighthawks stand once again and force the Sharks to settle for three. Nighthawks lead 7-3.
a Frankie Onate 26-yard field goal gets Jacksonville on the board. But, you know, the IFL to give up three points and two drives. Very, very solid, and a big reason why that man, Zavi Jackson, the new defensive coordinator, he is the all-time sack leader in IFL history, was inducted into the Hall of Fame a season ago as we get a deuce off the kickoff. And officials making sure that ball did go through the goalpost. We'll get it confirmed in a second and then explain. It is a deuce, and that is one of those unique rules to the IFL. We watched Frankie Onate work on that a ton in pregame, where if you kick a field goal through the uprights on a kickoff, you do get two points, so two on the board for Jacksonville. So a big boost for this uh, Sharks team, but defensively, you know, this Nighthawks team has been strong so far, and we mentioned Xavier Jackson leading the way, but you look at the run defense, the pass defense, they're getting it everywhere, Malik Harris, Mikhail Calhoun, and then of course Bryce Hampton on the interception earlier, but so far so good for this Nighthawks defense and to your point about the high scoring nature of the IFL it hasn't looked like it today at the DLC with how the Nighthawks are playing 7-5 so far but Xavier Jackson comes over Xavier with her to shin from Tucson last year as the Nighthawks did not get that snap off a delay of game on those deuces in the IFL when you kick a deuce not only do you get the two points but you also pin the opposing offense they have to start at their own five yard line so it if you're able to execute it, not many kickers are, but if you can, it's a huge boost to have for your team. And that was a rule change made last year. You used to only be able to kick a deuce in the final minute of each half. Now you can do it any time, and it can be a game changer. Yeah, we know in, in any level of football how important a kicker is, but uh, essentially a punt as well. You know, like you're pinning them inside the 20-yard line. Uh, a good job there by the Jacksonville yeah, Sharks. First in basically 12 and a half as Quentin Randolph is touched into the wall by Breon Murray after a short pickup of a few on first down. With what we've watched so far out of this offense from Vegas, it's kind of been the inverse, Justin, of week one. Nighthawks went basically purely read option and running plays to start, then transition to pass. It's a little, it's been more pass first than run second so far today. Yeah, I think it's about what the defense gives you as well because you have that luxury of having Jerome Johnson being able to attack you in both ways. So a lot of the times, if something stops working, if the run game stops working, you have that ability to go to the pass game. Second and 10 for the Nighthawks from their own five. There's the read option, but it's handled pretty well. And so far, Jacksonville's done a really good job of contain on those design runs for Jerome Johnson. He's a little bit slow to get up as he's helped up by Yurik Jones, who's been one of the best defensive linemen in the IFL each of the last two years. Big reason for that success in the trenches. Yeah, the big man there inside doing everything he can to stop Jerome Johnson. You know, of course, he had that touchdown earlier, but for the most part, given what we saw last week from him on the ground, uh, a bit pretty tame performance thus far because the Sharks' defense has been so strong. Johnson had that short yardage touchdown from five yards out that started the scoring jacksonville responded with a 26 yard field goal and the deuce on the ensuing kickoff it's a 7-5 game nighthawks just get the snap off on third and eight johnson pumps buys time back across the field and it's somehow caught with a flag down that had to elude our main umpire in the middle of the field but tory and taylor talk about hand-eye coordination man what a catch flag was down Holding offense number 77 half the distance third down It will not stand with the hold going on second-year offensive lineman Moses Mallory But I mean my goodness what a catch there by Taylor. Yeah, that, that's a tough distraction I don't know what was better the umpire ducking out of the way and throwing the Seriously. flag at the same time or the concentration to make that catch by Terry as Johnson just kind of throws across his body and a really good throw as well to get it by the defender But uh, it won't stand as a hold brings it back for the Nighthawks that was an unbelievable job of officiating, you gotta say, uh, from our umpire Roscoe Meisenheimer. Third and long, Johnson from his own end zone. Has a man, Randolph flips the field. Big play to get the Nighthawks out of some trouble. That's what we've come to expect from Quentin Randolph. And of course, he had that opportunity on the other side of the field that didn't go his way on that drop. But this time, on a big third down deep in their own territory, Jerome Johnson stands tall and lets it fly as Quentin Randolph, nice adjustment back to the ball to make that catch. About a 28-yard pickup for Quentin Randolph in a very similar spot last week. Nighthawks were down by one in the final minute at Arizona. They had a third and 20 on their own five-yard line, and Randolph had the catch of the game for 36 yards to get him in field goal range, set up the ultimate game-winning kick at the horn as Taylor gets nothing on the ground, and he's quickly developing into a guy for Jerome Johnson 
the single wide receiver he will count on the most when he really needs it down the stretch. Yeah, and again, we saw it on the other end of the field that he has that ability to separate. He beat Gorman right off the line and was wide open, just didn't finish the play. So you have a guy that consistently can get open like that. You want to keep looking for him, and they finally get that big connection they've been looking for. And you see head coach Mike Davis in the background, quarterbacks coach Mark Bly in the foreground as Jerome Johnson in his second game as a Nighthawk has utilized Quentin Randolph several times already, the returning Nighthawk from last year. Second and ten. Johnson, nowhere to go. Flushed. Turns on the Jets and look at him go down the sideline. Few yards short of a first down as we send it down to the bench in our Mariah Janos. Yeah, you guys, as we saw Jerome Johnson just using his legs when I talked to head coach Mike Davis, he said it's great having a dual option quarterback like that because while we still want to throw first, if we're in a jam, he can really get us out of it as we just saw. Now, as for Johnson's connection with his wide receivers, I asked him, I said, you've got a really talented group of receivers. What's it like working with them? How is it, how has it been? He said, they're making my job easy. All I have to do is put the ball in the air, and nine out of ten times, they're coming down with it, and we just saw that there. That uh, Johnson-Randolph connection is going strong. And on cue, Mariah, he goes back to the well. It's his other top wide receiver, Caleb Holly, in for six, and the Nighthawks have another touchdown in the red zone. Well, you talk about making things easy on Jerome Johnson and Caleb Hawley. Again, we just talked about Quentin Randolph's ability to separate, and Hawley had a couple of yards on the nearest defender there as Jerome Johnson was able to hang in and find him on the right side of the field. Wide open for Hawley for the touchdown. After a nine-yard scramble to set up third and short, it's a misdirection, and Caleb Hawley, who had a couple catches, one of them a touchdown last week in that win in Arizona, now has his second of the year as Macias knocks down the PAT. Second straight drive with a touchdown for the Nighthawks. They extend the lead to nine. Late in the second quarter, a 14-5 lead over Jacksonville as we step aside. A look at Mike Davis as the Nighthawks lead 14-5 over Jacksonville. 6.37 to go in the first half. Jerome Johnson, two touchdowns today, one on the ground, one through the air. The last one to Caleb Holly as Macias goes low squib. Taken by Solomon. Does not have a whole lot of room to work with as he's slammed down to the turf by D.J. Ford. Good coverage on that kick as Jacksonville has to start inside their own 10. Well, Jacksonville, one of a couple new franchises into the IFL this year. We're up to 16 teams now in the IFL. Sharks just made their debut last week in a loss on the road at Massachusetts, but a lot of success. They were founded in 2010, made the postseason six of their seven years in the AFL, then went to the NAL where they won three titles in five years, and the IFL just continues to expand. The league gets a really good, solid team with Jacksonville, who has a great fan base as well. Yeah, a really fun addition here, and of course, they're trying to find their footing here in their first couple of weeks and looking for a big drive here from Connor Blunt. So far, two drives. One field goal as Blunt's flushed out of the pocket, being chased by Harris, has to throw across the field and finds a man, Brian Smith Jr., across midfield. 
a gain of 18. Great job by Bond to extend the play and throw back across the field as he picks up the first down. And here's a look now just of how widespread the IFL is. So many teams clustered on the West Coast, but Jacksonville, your representative of the great state of Florida. Nighthawks will have a return trip to Jacksonville in just a few weeks. Yeah, it's fun to see all these teams in different regions start to grow now, too. A, a nationwide sport uh, the IFL is becoming, and great to see the addition of Jacksonville. The Sharks looking to get some cohesion on offense. Both drives have reached Vegas territory, had an interception, and then had to settle for a field goal. Another drive into Vegas territory, but a short gain of about two on that left side run for Logan Wright on first and ten. You know, we talked about earlier the Nighthawks' ability to expand on their lead and how that could put some pressure on Blunt, but you saw the play previous where he had to roll out to his right, and he was able to find Smith Jr. And really playing well in the face of pressure on that one to continue this drive for the Jacksonville Sharks. And Blunt's off to a solid start. Five of nine so far, 53 yards. The big mistake was on the opening drive, the interception. As it's second and eight, Jacksonville with the Nighthawk 20. Blunt's clean pocket. End zone has a man. Touchdown. The best wide receiver in the NAL last year has his first touchdown this week in the IFL as Jacksonville strikes and pulls within three. Really nice response drive there by Connor Blunt, and we talked about the safety blanket of Cameron Solomon, and he goes right back to him. Finds his finds some open spot behind James Caesar in the back of the end zone and gets his first touchdown in the IFL. A big reason why the Sharks struggled on offense last week. They didn't have Solomon. He was inactive. Now he's in their first game this season for the team and hauls in the touchdown. PAT good from Onate, and the Sharks find pay dirt for the first time. Now the offense is starting to heat up. 14-12, Nighthawks lead, but the Sharks pull within two. Back inside the Donald Lone Center, 14-12 lead for the Vegas Nighthawks after Jacksonville strikes. Touchdown from quarterback Connor Blunt to Cameron Solomon. Had 32 of those last year to lead the NAL. And kicker Frankie Onate going for another deuce, but that again hit the underside of the roof here. It is, compared to most venues in the IFL, much lower ceiling you have at the Donald Lone Center. So good starting field position as a result for the Nighthawks. After tonight, the Nighthawks are next in flight Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. against the San Antonio Gunslingers. And it's $2 beer and margarita night. I think you know where to nest for the night. Call 702-645-4259 or visit nighthawksfootball.com to get your tickets today. I think I also know where Justin Russo will be on Friday, April 12th at 7 p.m. <laughs> Fair to say. Yeah, you don't have to, to answer say. that question. You just, I'm just going to say. I just it. love it's me some Nighthawks football. Yes, you do. Nighthawks, since that's the second time a ball has gone out of play on the kickoff, now on any subsequent kick out of bounds, we'll start at midfield. From the 25, Jerome Johnson back to work. Hit as he throws, and despite some early contact, Randolph makes the catch anyway. There wasn't a flag, but how tough was that catch through traffic by Randolph? 
Yeah, it was one of those plays where it was really close to simultaneous contact. It looked like it might have been a bit early, but the concentration by Quentin Randolph to make that catch as the left arm of Harrison Poole goes over him and tries to knock that ball away. Great play by Randolph, and again, you're starting to see him heat up now for this offense. Third catch for 36 yards for Randolph. Picks up nine there as we near the two-and-a-half-minute mark of the first half. Nighthawks on top 14-12. They've led the whole way. Have been good on offense ever since the first drive. Stalled out. Were denied on a fourth and short. Give to Torrey and Taylor. He has the first down and then a few more yards. Down to the 10 of Jacksonville. And having a dual threat quarterback like Jerome Johnson, Coach Mike Davis talked to Mariah earlier about the benefits of having a guy like that. He's the 10th quarterback, though, Justin, to take a snap in three years. Nighthawks have been desperate for a guy who can provide both consistency and health, and they're really confident that Johnson will give them that this year. Yeah, and I think that's why he's such a luxury, too, because you, you take one aspect of his game, if that was consistent either as a passer or as a runner, you'd say that's a pretty good upgrade for this Nighthawks team. And he's had come as the full package for this Nighthawks team, and you've seen how well it's been able to help the offense excel in the first two weeks. A first and goal at the 10. Quick throw outside, and a diving attempt can't be made by Jonathan Johnson as it's second and goal at the 10. And that's really been the theme, though, for the Nighthawks. They went 6-10 and 10 in their debut season, had to use six different quarterbacks. 5-10 and 10 last year, three different guys used, as you see in the look at Johnson, unable to make the play. And Johnson's been a guy that's been featured... Uh, pretty heavily here too he hasn't had the production yet because he's had a, a couple of tough pass breakups going against him but they've been looking his way a lot today too johnson getting the start because cj windham was questionable game time decision he is out tonight big hole taylor with the cut with some space and he's in touchdown nighthawks torian taylor his first td is a pro What a moment there for Torrey and Taylor, and, and what a play to get it done, too. The rush game for the Nighthawks starting to pick up, and look at that, right in the hole, one cut, and he's gone. Over to the right side, a nice block by Caleb Hawley there to seal the touchdown, and the Nighthawks strike again. Out of Scottsdale, Georgia, Taylor was inactive last week. The coaches decided to flip running backs this week. Taylor gets his chance, and the former Tuskegee alum, the five-year D2 player in Alabama, First year as a pro at any level gets the TD as the kick from Macias is up and good. We've reached the one-minute warning of the first half. Nighthawks with touchdowns on each of their last three drives as they've taken a 21-12 lead over Jacksonville. We're back for the final minute of the first half right after this. A reason to celebrate in the first half of the Nighthawk fans. Team comes in 1-0. They upset the powerhouse Arizona Rattlers on the road to start the season. And the Nighthawks have a 21-12 lead over Jacksonville as we've reached the one-minute warning of the first half. And Jerome Johnson, this Nighthawk offense, it's been all Johnson so far, but to show you've got other guys who can score just, it always helps. And Torian Taylor, his first career TD. Now Nighthawks try to get a stop here 
up by nine as they get the boot off the man. It's recovered in bounds. Randolph brought it in, and the Nighthawks won't have to get a stop. They get the ball right back. What a play. Boomed right off the shin of the up man Harrison Poole, and great hands by Randolph. Well, just like they drew it up, right? It goes right off of the up man, as you mentioned, and it bounces all the way toward the wall. And the sure hands of Quentin Randolph able to haul it in before it goes out of bounds. And what a turn here in the final minute for the Nighthawks as they have now an ability to further expand upon their lead uh, with just 58 seconds to go in the half. And that wasn't an accident. And those are design plays in the IFL where you get that low squib boot. You try to just bang it off an up man. That was executed to perfection by Macias. That's a lot harder than it looks, right? You gotta pick out a guy's foot and hope it deflects to the right guy. Yeah, and then you, you never know where the ball's gonna bounce either, but to your point, worked out to perfection there, and they get another drive out of it here in the first half. The Nighthawks turned it over on downs their opening drive. Since then, three drives, three touchdowns. Read option, big hole. Johnson slides down up to the 19 a five yard pickup and in the final minute of the first half it is normal timing rules in effect so it will stop the clock will stop on first downs nighthawks do have all three timeouts to play with i think that's key here they can really do whatever they want here with all three of those timeouts in their pocket johnson quick throw open randolph he can lean the ball over the crest of that wall that automatically stops the clock across the 25 down to the 23 and in the IFL where scoring can happen so quick it's kind of that dance you play trying to score and leave as little time as possible while still getting yourself in position with enough time start to engineer the drive here going back to Randolph again and yeah to your point one play can easily become a scoring drive for the Sharks on the other end so you want to leave as little time as possible here on the back end of this if you're able to score yeah, you tend to see coaches use their timeouts as late as possible the way it works in the IFL where you're already in striking distance first and 10 at the 23 for Johnson Nighthawks up nine little push pass Holly chopped down great open field tackle by Jabari Gorman last year's NAL defensive player of the year and the Nighthawks will burn a timeout there first of the half heard a shin the on field coach new offensive coordinator takes time yeah, nice little shove there by Johnson. Trying to get Hawley into space, one of your best players, but Gorman coming up strong there. We saw how well he played in the pass game earlier, but this time coming up to stop the run, and he was a big uh, force for them last week. And Caleb Hawley already has a score, trying to get more going here, but this veteran wide receiver core has been strong so far. And it helps when you bring in a new quarterback. You've got guys who know the system who've been so good. Those returning receivers combined for nearly 1,800 yards, 133 catches, and 36 touchdowns last year. Holly was the only offensive player as well, Justin, who started all 15 games a season ago, finished with 21 touchdowns, tied for fifth in the IFL. Yeah, just so much consistency in this wide receiver core, and, and we mentioned the returners at the top of our broadcast. It's very heavily focused on offense, but specifically in that wide receiver room, and they've been doing a great job this season so far, making things easy on a quarterback who has been a, a great threat himself. It's a second and nine Nighthawks ball at the Jacksonville 22 out of the timeout. Under pressure, Johnson rolls and throws incomplete. Really had nowhere to go with it, with Gorman draped all over the outlet running back, Torian Taylor. Clock stops, 19 seconds to go. Third and nine for the Nighthawks, up 21-12 at the end of the first half. So let's see what they draw up here. Herder's chain, obviously, to your point. You want to take as much time off as you can, but now you're getting to that gray area where 19 seconds to go. You have to push the ball a little bit, and on a third down here with... A bit of distance to go. Let's see what they can draw up. In the middle of the field, certainly your friend right here with the two timeouts. Johnson goes right over the middle, has his man. It's Jonathan Johnson on his fifth target, has his first catch and picks up a first down, also stops the clock with 15 seconds to go. And that's a nice one for Jonathan Johnson to get something on the board after having five targets, finally gets a catch to go and a nice post pattern there getting to the sideline and stopping the clock ball out at the 11 yard line and that's where having veteran coaches too really comes into play you don't necessarily need the boundaries you've got two timeouts there is time even if the clock only shows before that last snap 19 seconds now the Nighthawks have a lot they can do here with at least three more plays to run it's that pitch pass again this time behind the line of scrimmage Holly does not get out of bounds. The Nighthawks have to use their second timeout with 10 seconds to go and a short pickup for Holly. 
So they tried it on the right side, and Jabari Gorman came up and stopped that one. So they go back to it on the left. Not a huge gain by any means, but certainly just trying to slowly but surely trickle their way closer to the end zone. Just 10 seconds left now, but again, the Nighthawks still have two timeouts to work with, and they're only five yards away from pay dirt. So really, uh, everything is to play here for them, whether they want to rush, pass. They've got it all. A 21-12 lead for Vegas, closing stages of the first half. Nighthawks, after a slow start last week on the road, bringing in a new quarterback, getting him integrated with the system. Since then, Justin, this is the, if you combine the second half last week and the first half this week, it's been eight drives, seven touchdowns so far. They've been extremely efficient, and, you know, last week overall they were efficient in getting their scoring done on only 33 plays, but, again, bringing it back to what they did in the second half last week. There's 10 seconds to go in the first half. Shot to the end zone's broken up on a second and four play from the five yard line. Johnson again the intended target. Great hands by Breon Murray who had a pick six going into halftime last week for Jacksonville. Yeah, they're trying to take a shot to the end zone going back to Jonathan Johnson but the tip just off the hands and just out of reach there. And for a guy that had a pick six last week you know he wanted to wants to make an impact again and you see the hands go on the head as he wasn't able to haul that one in. Breon Murray, he was a great hokey at Va Tech, which is where Nighthawk head coach and GM Mike Davis played at, so very familiar with what Murray can do in that secondary. Third and five from the four yard line, eight seconds left. Nighthawks have one timeout to work with. And a flag before the snap, a little bit late to get that snap off and because of that with the receivers in full motion. Offense number four, five yard penalty, third down. Randolph out. got in front. Off the line of scrimmage, that goes down in the book as a false start. Back it up third and nine now at the 10-yard line. Yeah, and sometimes this isn't always a bad thing because you have a little bit more room to work with here down here, and you saw the, the tight pass that was broken up on the last play that was incomplete. These receivers, we know how good they are at finding space, have a little bit more room to work with now, so not the end of the world by any means for the Nighthawks, but a little bit further to go now. Johnson sends his two and forward motion from the right side and before the snap Jacksonville who has all three time first start, time they take first half, 30 seconds assistant head coach and DB's coach Bill Alford in his second stint second year for this Jacksonville defense who was a great player he won an AFL title with Jacksonville back in the early 2010s as a starter on that defense he calls the timeout each coach each team, I should say, allowed one on-field offensive and defensive coach in the IFL. You'd kind of think here with the way this has worked so far, and the last time we saw a similar type of down and distance, Justin, you go kind of a drag route over the middle. If you don't get out of bounds, no big deal. You just yeah. go down, you have the time out here. And that was what we saw Caleb Hawley score on earlier, and another couple of touchdowns coming on the ground for this Nighthawks team. So, again, they have that extra space to work with, and they still have the time with one timeout to do really whatever they want. Jerome Johnson played at two different D2 schools now in his second IFL season on third and nine from the 10. Johnson, quick throw. It's a fade, and it's broken up in the end zone with a flag down. Pal Holly was just being draped by Harrison Poole as the pass interference will go on the Sharks. Pass interference, number 14 of the defense. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line by rule. First and goal. In all honesty, though, Justin, there's three seconds left. Not a bad decision if you're beaten by the DB. Just grab the guy. Don't, don't let him have the easy score. Yeah, you see him get the arm over the bucket, if you will, of Caleb Hawley as he was trying to let that one fall into his arms. And with just three seconds left, you know, like you said, you give up that one, and it's one shot. As a result, you really do force the hand of Mike Davis and the Nighthawks, but up by nine, they won't press the issue. We'll settle for three here. Macias hit the game winner at the horn. First game winning kick as time expired in franchise history last week against the Rattlers. This one center cut. Only 17 yards out. And his kick is cleanly delivered up and good in the first half. As the Nighthawks take a 24-12 lead into the break and a great response, Justin, after they were stopped on downs on their opening possession, scored on the last four drives of the half. Yeah, and, you know, they tried to get the, the rush game going. They tried to get the read option going like we saw last week with Jerome Johnson and uh, it worked to an extent on that first drive, but they ended up turning it over on downs. But since then, they've really opened things up. These wide receivers have gotten going and the offense as a result has been explosive for Coach Mike Davis. 
very slow start for both offenses. Just seven points in the first quarter. They explode for 29 in the second quarter. We send it down to our reporter, Mariah Jano. She's standing by with head coach Mike Davis. Coach, before the game, we talked about execution. You guys seem to be firing on all cylinders right now. What's your evaluation of the first half? You know, we missed a couple throws early, um, one blown coverage late. But, we're, you know, we're, we're learning. We're young. You know, we just got to keep plugging away. And how do you come up on top in that second half finish out this game? You know, we got to come out and they get the ball. We got to get a stop eventually and then let our offense get, get back to being efficient and clicking on all cylinders. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Mariah. A solid start. Still work to do for the Vegas Nighthawks in their home opener. Looking to go to 2-0 on the season. 24-12, the lead at halftime. A big interception early by the Vegas kid, Bryce Hampton. A couple touchdowns for the newest Nighthawk quarterback, Jerome Johnson, and a rushing touchdown to boot for Torian Taylor. At the half, it's Vegas 24, Jacksonville 12. Welcome back into the Dollar Loan Center. What a start for the Vegas Nighthawks who are up 24 to 12 at the half, looking to keep that momentum rolling into the second. Now, before this broadcast started, we gave you a little sneak peek of the IFL's collaboration with rapper Denim. He made a special song just for this league. And now we are going to show you the full feature on Denim. Take a look. Choice 
but to lace up. Every day is game day. Off my third contract, you still on that same play. Pop spit it out, but I got family sitting chain lace. Oh, you about that action? Tell them boys you about the same thing. Get your popcorn ready. Half man, half amazing. Human highlight reel. You gon' see my name in Beijing. Heavy rep I take. You gon' see the pain that made me. It's gritty on a gridiron. Only one of us can stay in king. Touchdown every time I touch down. And my defense shut down every time I touch ground. Yeah, lying harder, but I got the eye of an eagle. I put the city on my back. Look, I'm gonna ride for my people. And once I take the stage, I'ma start like evil Knievel. I built the conquer heights. My mind's a Danny DeVito. And once I get my first ring, I'm manifesting the sequel. Yo, this the IFL. Where the men become heroes of in the end oh, oh. Are you ready for that end? Oh, oh. You ain't really about that end oh, oh. Are you ready for that end? Oh, end, oh, end oh, oh. Are you ready for that end? Oh, oh. You ain't really about that end oh, oh. Are you ready for that end? Oh, end oh, oh. What a song perfectly encapsulating the intensity of this league, and we got ourselves quite a game here. The Nighthawks up 24 to 12. We'll be back after the break. Welcome back into the Dollar Loan Center. The Vegas Nighthawks with a 24 to 12 lead over the Jacksonville Sharks at the half. What a game it's been. And if you can't make it to the Dollar Loan Center, we've got game broadcast for you all season long. Five to be exact, including today's the next one coming up in April, then May, June and July. One per month. You see it right there. Those are the games that you can tune into the Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network and you can catch all of the action the Vegas Nighthawks up 24 to 12 we'll be back right after the break
Back at halftime inside the Donald Loan Center, the Nighthawks doubling up the Jacksonville Sharks. 24-12 lead as we take a look at our first half stats. Been very balanced for the Nighthawks. 74 pass yards, 63 rushing. Have doubled up the Sharks both in the point category as well as first downs and have done a great job moving the chains as well. Four for six so far on third down. Back inside the DLC, i Ben Wilson along with Justin Russo. Justin, while we always talk about offense in the IFL, it's really been the defense of the Nighthawks that has really been impressive so far. Yeah, only 12 points allowed so far for this Nighthawks defense, and I think considering what you had last week with a high-flying Rattlers team, Nighthawks so far doing an excellent job defensively on this Shark squad. Got an early interception to set the tone as we take a look at the first half highlights. Nighthawks only failed to score on their first offensive possession in the game after that. It was Four for four, three touchdowns and a field goal, but it got set up by some of these great defensive plays here, both in the D-line and in the passing game as well. The first career pick for the Vegas kid, Bryce Hampton. Yeah, the defense has been really strong. The rush defense as well. We knew the Sharks struggled coming in on the ground, and the Nighthawks have done a great job of stopping the run. There you see Mikel Calhoun getting into the action with a sack on Connor Bunt. And then on the offensive side of things, Jerome Johnson continuing where he was last week. A read option there for a touchdown, getting things done through the air as well. This deep shot on a nice adjustment to Quentin Randolph and this veteran wide receiver core continuing to help out their new quarterback. 8 of 15, 74 yards and a touchdown with a rushing touchdown as well. Nighthawks up 24-12 at the half. Jacksonville gets the ball when we come back to start the third quarter. Me? Oh, mic check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Catching up here with Quentin Randolph in right, just a second. There's Quentin. All right, he, was, he was getting all fired up ready to start the third quarter. Now we can send it back down to Mariah. And she is talking with Quentin Randolph right now. All right, Quentin. That first half, you guys really got in a roll those final drives of the half. What has been working so well for you guys? Um, just sticking to coach's game plan, seeing the throws, seeing the runs, and executing the plays that are called. What was the message in the locker room at the half? Uh, to come out here and really establish ourselves. Um, we feel like the game is too close. We need to go ahead and expand this lead and play like the Vegas Nighthawks play. How do you expand it? By executing the game plan. <laughs> Good answer. Thank you, Q. Guys, I'll send it back to you. Hey, Quentin's been around the blocker time or two. Thanks so much, Mariah. A guy who in week one, Justin, went over 100 career catches in 
his IFL career, and it only took him about uh, 20 games and change to do so. 14 games last year, all starts, 56 catches for 801 yards. Both led the team, and Randolph's off to another really good start this season. And I think it's no secret why Jerome Johnson has been so strong as well. He even told us that it's the wide receiving core helping him out so much, and we've seen him go to all three of his main guys in Johnson, Holly, and Randolph. And as Quentin said there, if they can execute the game plan, good second half upcoming for the v, uh, Vegas Nighthawks. Good look at Quentin Randolph there. Rest of the special teams unit as Jackson will have the ball first as we start the second half. There's a new defensive coordinator, Xavier Jackson. In the IFL Hall of Fame, the Ironman Gabe McCoy, who has played in all but one. 31 of the Nighthawks 32 all-time games last week was the first game he had ever missed had a hamstring tweak was unable to make the trip to Arizona but he's been back in there playing a crucial role both on special teams and on the defensive side good first half of the Nighthawks 24 12 as we start this third quarter Macias has it on the tee goes low squib where it's taken by Cameron Solomon and it skips over his head watch out could be a rouge and it is the Nighthawks start the half by getting an extra point Gary Reed giving the explanation to the crowd inside the Don Lone Center. That's one of those rules that the Indoor Football League has adopted from the CFL. Justin, the Rouge, you cannot touch back. Can't take a knee in the end zone if you can't get it out. You give up a point, and the Nighthawks take a 25-12 lead. And another reason why some of these squibs are, are such a good idea for the Nighthawks. We saw them get an extra possession out of one at the end of the first half, but a bit of an over-aggressive play there to try to go up and get that ball, and it takes the bounce right over the head for the one point for the Nighthawks. That's really the strategy, the squib, the bounce, bounce, and then the boom right over the head. As Blunt's back to work, first throw is in and out of the hands of Jeremiah Payton, intended target on the far boundary. First half numbers for Blunt. He was really good, Justin, after the early struggles, had a pick on the opening drive after that, was 6 of 9 for 74 yards, and a touchdown with Solomon, the key piece, 3 for 39 and a touch. Yeah, I think he really settled into this game, and if he can just play mistake-free football uh, different than what he did last week, he can just do enough to keep this uh, Sharks team in the game. Blunt and Jacksonville in their second-ever IFL game feels the pressure. Little fake, but cannot get past Mikel Calhoun. Already has one sack in there. He saved what would have been at least a 15-yard scamper. Well, Calhoun has been all over the place in this game. He had the sack earlier, had the pressure earlier, and this time, as Blunt tries to scramble, certainly not the legs of Jerome Johnson, and Calhoun comes up and makes the stop there. He had eight tackles last week for this team, and he continues to put the pressure on defensively. And with Gabe McCoy being more of a utility guy, they've moved McCoy to defensive line on his rotations. Mikel Calhoun has been the starting linebacker each of the first two games. See McCoy, that number 10 in black on the edge of the D-line. As it's a third and nine to start the second half for Jacksonville. Blunts steps up again, and he slips. The old turf monster got him. As Lee Autry was the closest defensive lineman to him, Blunt had a season-ending knee injury last year, and this looked like his cleat got caught there, Justin. Yeah, just like he did couple plays ago trying to step up in the pocket yeah just trips over not sure if it was the turf or if he got the back foot of one of the offensive linemen but he falls down there and it creates a lengthy field goal opportunity here for the Sharks you're right on replay might have caught the heel of Will Eoff his right guard and there's a look at that knee brace Blunt was tackled hard into the wall in a scramble run last year in week four did not play the rest of the season and because you can't punt in the IFL you have to settle for a field goal and that is a delay of game kick and snap did not get off which is a good thing for Jacksonville because it would have been blocked prior to the snap delay of game offense half the distance to the goal fourth down what often happens in these situations as a result Justin you're obviously not going to make a what is the equivalent of a 58 yard field goal so really you're just trying to get this snap off and you're trying to pooch it somewhere down the field and give up as little of a return as possible yeah, no punting allowed in the IFL, but this is a workaround for it a little bit. You can find a way to pooch it down there and, and flip the field at the very least. Now, technically speaking, end zones are eight yards deep. Three yards in his own end zone means this is a 61-yard kick for Onate. Now, just trying to angle this somewhere away from the return of Roderick Chapman. Snap is down. Here's the kick, and it goes right into the protective netting of the Jumbotron. And it's blown dead there. And that's the other tough part about it when you're in the 
IFL. Hey, while we have a moment, bring your family out for the high-flying fun of indoor football April 27th as your Nighthawks host the Duke City Gladiators at 7 p.m. Get a ticket, hot dog, and drink starting at just $34 a seat. Tickets also starting at just $18 per game. Call 702-645-4259 or visit nighthawksfootball.com. So that ball is dead right at the spot where it hit the support of the Jumbotron. That's where it's even tougher. In this building, Justin, if you're pinned deep, you want to get the ball over the defensive line who are yeah. trying to block it, but you also can't really afford to go too high or else you're sending it right into the Jumbotron. Yeah, you have to find that perfect middle. And, of course, with his previous attempt being blocked, he readjusted, but he went too far on the other end of the spectrum. 25-12 Nighthawks early third quarter. Keeper by Jerome Johnson has one rushing touchdown already and picks up a solid seven-yard gain here. Really feels right now like a dangerous part of the game for Jacksonville. Nighthawks with a score would go up three possessions and really feel like they'd have control of this game. Yeah, head coach Mike Davis uh, at the half was saying how his team needed a stop. They got it. Now you see the offense going to work. The read option coming back here for Jerome Johnson back to the right side and you know, not a flashy play by any sense of the word, but picking up chunks of yards here as they move toward the end zone. Jerome Johnson had 116 rush yards last week, 179 passing yards as well. Was just named IFL Player of the Week, has his Nighthawks up 13. Johnson, open man, Holly the catch, touchdown Vegas! Caleb Holly's second of the game, and the Nighthawks start to open it up, a 31-12. Yeah, there's Holly again. Remember on the other side of the field, it was that drag route, and he got open to the right. This time it's to the left. They flipped the field. They flipped the play, but the same result. Caleb Hawley into the end zone for the touchdown, and what a game he is having here in the home opener at the DLC. 21 touchdowns last year. He was supposed to be on the Nighthawks in the first year as an expansion team, but he got signed late to the CFL and the Edmonton Elks, so he actually left the team in training camp, didn't play that first year, but has been a steady presence each of the last two seasons. PAT good. Caleb Holly's two touchdowns have given the Nighthawks a 20-point lead, 32-12, 10-20 to go in the third as we step aside from the Dollar Loan Center. Welcome back. The Nighthawks up 32 to 12 over the Sharks. We saw Gabe McCoy limping off the field. He limped down the tunnel, made an audible scream of frustration, got checked out by the trainers. Uh, they moved around his lower right foot a bit, taped him up a little bit more. And now, as you can see, guys, he's back out on the field, good to go. So nothing major going on there as of right now. Thanks, Mariah. We've mentioned it before. Gabe McCoy is the ultimate warrior and, and Iron Man, really. That's kind of the moniker he has gotten as the Sharks started their own 12 after that muffed kickoff by Cameron Solomon. And McCoy, you know it's bad. It's a guy who's played in all 31 of your team's games, had to miss a game last week. He told me they're still trying to figure out what's wrong. It's been some sort of tweak with his leg, but he's trying to play through it for now. 
Yeah, it's one of those tough injuries, too, where you want to play through it, but you also don't want to re-aggravate it. So as much of a warrior as he is, ultimate respect for him getting out there. McCoy's on the field right now, that 10 in black. Blunt steps up. Jacksonville needs a big spark down 20, and Blunt has to throw it away. He took a shot at the end. Calhoun and Autry both crunched him right up against the wall in second and 10. Can't speak enough about how well Calhoun has played in this game. Such a rangy linebacker. He can get from sideline to sideline. He can do it in the passing game and, of course, blitzing and in the run game. He's been so great today. Well, Calhoun, one of two guys on the roster who are Florida natives. Quentin Randolph on offense, Calhoun on defense. Mikel's from Clearwater. Not in the same near area as Jacksonville, but still playing against a team from your home state. A lot of motivation there today, especially the home opener as well. As it's second and ten, Blunt swings it out of the backfield. Short toss. Wright just trucks his way forward up to the 15 and picks up five with a third down and five coming. And now there is Jerry Garner on the stop. This is a Nighthawk coaching staff that feels like the strength this year is really on the D-line, which is a big change because last year they allowed the most rush yards per game in the IFL. We have seen a clear change to that already this season. Yeah, they've been excellent so far, whether it's just containing their gaps and stopping the run, or as we mentioned with Calhoun and some of these linebackers being able to blitz and then just stop things up front there. Third and seven for Jacksonville. First drive of the second half. Blunt's under pressure. Deep shot. He has a man wide open. Cameron Solomon, he sort of hit himself in the first row of the stands there. Comes back and makes the catch right in front of one of a couple of Vegas natives in this defensive backfield. There's a look at one of them, Bryce Hampton, who played at Purdue last in 2023. An outstanding high school career at Centennial. Had the interception earlier this season. Malik Hausman comes off the bench. Won a national title with Bishop Gorman back in 2017 as well. Then played for both Arizona and Hawaii. It's been a staple of the Nighthawks. They've always really had guys from within the community integrated into the program. And this year, no different. Yeah, so great to see those couple of Vegas natives on this defense. A handoff left side. Wright tries to turn the edge. Chapman just booms him into the wall. Nice job by Malik Harris to force him into that boundary as well. And so you have the two Vegas natives. And then you also have a guy like Gabe McCoy, who a lot of people around Las Vegas have gotten to know very well. Was a three-year starter for the UNLV Rebels and has been a big part of the community as well. Coaches locally and has done a great job both in the community and with the team too. So it's been a big part. Big emphasis for Mike Davis trying to find the right combo of guys. A second and eight right now. 20-point lead for Vegas. Jacksonville, though, knocking on the door. As they have a second and eight from the 10-yard line. Give to the right side. Right bounces off one tackler. Spins inside the five. Down to the one. And Logan Wright, he gets ahead of Steve, man. Tough to slow down. Former Georgia Southern standout where he played for five years. Yeah, six foot, 230 pound running back. And that's the kind of style they want him to play, right? They want to get him downhill, but they've just struggled to run the ball in the last couple of weeks. So you see them try to get him involved out of the backfield and in any way they can. But I think that's the bread and butter for Logan Wright. Yeah, Wright only had five carries, five yards in the first half. He's been utilized much more in this third quarter. First and goal at the one. Right back to right. He's hit hard in the backfield and stood up for a loss on the play. How about Jerry Garner with that push right up the middle for the big man out of Mississippi Valley State. You know, it was almost one of those plays, given what had just happened on the previous play with Wright getting down near the goal line that, okay, you know what we're going to do? Now can you stop it? And the Nighthawks were certainly ready for it that time. Garner shooting the gap and making a big defensive play. It's a nice luxury to have Garner coming off the bench last week and started this week. A guy who played in the XFL last year with the Orlando Guardians and was in the CFL with Saskatchewan the year before that. Jumbo package now on second and goal for Jacksonville. They go right back to right, pushing, leading. He is short again. Gets about a yard and a half, but the Nighthawks hold firm as it's third and goal at the half-yard line. So let's see what the play calling is here for this Sarge team because you figure down 20, clock ticking here in the third quarter. You're going to be aggressive and likely go for it again. So do you try one more time now that you're a bit closer? I mean, they're inches away from the goal line. Do you try to give right one more opportunity or do you abandon, do you abandon it now and try to see if you can go somewhere else to get this touchdown? All about the trenches right now for Jacksonville and it got to have it possession. Obvious four down territory. Again, go jumbo in the backfield with Blunt under center. Oh, but a flinch. 
Will Eoff, the rookie, moves early, facing right in front of Jerry oh, Curry, the D line Offense number 72. Third down. A big mistake for Jacksonville as they get backed up out to the five and a half. And that changes your entire play call uh, mindset here. You could have perhaps gone back to Logan Wright again, given you were inches away from the goal line, but Eoff trying to get off the ball a little early to get that push to get into the end zone, and he cost his team there. So now a third and a bit longer here for Connor Blunt and the Sharks. Fans making noise inside the down the loan center. Another false start. False start. Offense, number 63, five-yard penalty. Throw down. That time, Nick Ruz, the center. Blunt waiting for that snap, and it never came. Hey, you mentioned the noise cranking up here at the DLC, and now the fans getting involved in a couple of mistakes. They don't snap the ball. And five yards further back for this Sharks offense, who has just gone backwards after getting inches away from the goal line. And Jabril Gee, the center there, and Roos right next to him. It's a pretty veteran offensive club. Five of the eight starters are returners from last year, but the two guys, two of the three newcomers, are the ones who had the false starts on the last two sequences. Third and goal. Blunt. End zone. And complete. Had to go up and over the top of Hampton. Couldn't drop it in to Terry, his intended target. Yeah, it was one of those passes for Blunt where you just want to throw it up to only the spot that your receiver can get it. But this one just a bit out of reach as you see Hampton just over his arm. Really good throw to get it over Hampton, but a bit too far out of the end zone as Terry clapping his hands there, wishing he could have hauled that in. You're down 20, three touchdowns. You have to go for it here if you're Jacksonville, and they will. Fourth and goal just outside the 10. Blunt's back in the end zone. Caught! And I got to have it play. The Sharks come up big. Cameron Solomon open in the end zone for his second touchdown today. And the Sharks are not done yet. Clutch play there as Blunt finds Solomon again. He had the touchdown earlier. And this time on fourth down, as you said, got to have it. And Blunt able to strike here on fourth down into the back of the end zone. I'm sure Xavier Jackson and Nethawk DC will be wondering how Solomon, the best wide receiver in the National Arena League last year, got so wide open on fourth and goal. Jacksonville still has life. PAT is good as they're on the board in the second half. Still down 13, but some smiles over on that bench as we take a break. championship to bring a championship to Vegas and that's my main agenda and playing with my teammates and they make it I came here to win a championship to bring a championship to Vegas and that's my main agenda and playing with my teammates and they make it way easier for me so and what's the main area of focus for you today um just staying focused poise and all that A touchdown on fourth and goal from the 10 yard line for Jacksonville. Second hookup today between Connor Blunt and Cameron Solomon. That felt Justin like if the Nighthawks got a stand, this thing was pretty much game over yet. Jacksonville, team who won a title last year in the NAL, still has some life. Yeah, given with that the Nighthawks offense has been so strong, a stop there would have done wonders for them, but they're now back into the game. Going for the deuce. There's been one successful deuce already, but this one 
is still in play off the back screen there. Roderick Chapman takes it out across the 10. And that's where the Nighthawks will begin. Jerome Johnson in his home debut. He talked with our Mariah Janos earlier about his expectations for this season in a Nighthawk uniform. I came here to win a championship, to bring a championship to Vegas, and that's my main agenda, and playing with my teammates, and they make it way easier for me, so. And what's the main area of focus for you today? Um, just staying focused, poised and all that. Don't be too excited, because we have the team to win each and every game. We just got to do our jobs. But Jerome Johnson playing for a new offensive coordinator in Herta Shin, who is the IFL coach of the year last year. It's been a really good start, hasn't it, Justin? And that dual threat nature we were promised coming in has been showcased today. Yeah, he's certainly living up to his own expectations there, but also a bit humble, you know, saying, hey, I have the team in front of me to do it, and I just need to go out there and execute. They had a three-way quarterback battle in the preseason that Johnson won as he buys time, scrambling under all sorts of pressure and just throws it away with a flag down. That flag did come from the umpire position back toward the line of scrimmage as we wait on the call. By the way, just to clean up on that kickoff, since it hit the back screen and was out of the end zone, Nighthawks had the option. Offense, number 52, 10-yard penalty, first down. And it is a hold on Kevin Toots, newcomer for the Nighthawks, but because that return only went out to the 11, they were able to elect to take the ball at the 25 as we get another look. You see right in the middle there, the center with the hold. Yeah, grabs a bit of that right shoulder there, but you know, nonetheless still showcases the ability of Jerome Johnson to at the very least extend that play and not take the sack so you don't further compound the issue. Johnson started nine games for Green Bay last year. He missed time with a knee injury, but was absolutely electric. 18 touchdowns to six picks. Also rushed for 13 TDs as well. So you're talking about 31 touchdowns in nine games. As we get the play clock... Running down here and another stoppage before a first and 20 play for the Nighthawks, leading by 13 late third quarter. And it looks like a challenge has been thrown by Mike Davis. In this situation, you can challenge a legal defense. You can challenge any defensive penalty, but a legal defense would be what the Nighthawks are set to challenge. That the Nighthawks are challenged that, that the Sharks were a legal defense. Timeout on the field. It's our head referee, Gary Clark. He'll head over to the end of the end zone, take a look at the tablet, and we will have the review result when we come back. We'll take a break. Nighthawks leading 32-19. Back inside the Dollar Loan Center on this Easter Sunday. Nighthawks looking to go to 2-0 on the early season in their home opener while Jacksonville looking for their first ever win in the IFL after moving over from the National Arena League following their 2023 championship last summer. But a 32-19 lead for the Nighthawks. Mike Davis just used one of his two coaches' challenges. They're still reviewing it. And in the world of the IFL, Justin, you can review illegal defense. There are so many things that constitute illegal defense. That's why this is taking some time for Gary Reed, our head ref and the replay crew to look at it because there are a lot of things that could happen, one of which being a defensive lineman out of his stance, 
You could also have a defensive lineman lining up outside the shoulders of the far offensive lineman, the two guards. You could also have a linebacker within five yards of the line of scrimmage called the belt. And we're trying to parse it all together here right now. Yeah, it looks like the linebacker outside of that five-yard box. So wondering if it's something along the defensive line and you know, perhaps the near defensive end there in his alignment. But interesting to see what Mike Davis saw that uh, you know, prompted him to challenge. And, of course, it was a holding penalty on the Nighthawks on that play. So he wants to negate that holding penalty and give his team a better opportunity on this upcoming drive. That was on the first play of the drive for the Nighthawks, which started at midfield. So this look is after that. So they blew the play dead. This this play is sort of a, you know, irrelevant in general just because they were uh, Mike Davis threw the challenge like you see on the far side of your screen before that play got underway. The red hanky was out there. Here's a look at Gary Reed. You know, Gary is always great at explaining things as Mike Davis has a nice uh, chat with the fans. That's one of the best parts about the After IFL. Review, the rune on the field stands. First and 20 from the Nighthawks. So no illegal defense. That means the Nighthawks will lose one of their two challenges and one of their three timeouts. Mike Davis will begrudgingly accept that decision. Shot back over to the sideline. Interestingly, last week, Mike Davis, and you're allowed the one on-field coach. Mike was on the field as a defensive coach against Arizona this week. Uh, he is on the bench while his team's on offense. He's been the defensive coach, but it's his OC Herta Shin who's out there right now. First and 20 snap, and it's knocked up in the air. Yurik Jones, who had a bunch of pass deflections last year with the Arizona Rattlers, 11 in 11 games. That is what he's known for, Justin, one of the best D linemen in the IFL. And there's a big reason, standing six foot seven, he's able to get those paws up there, and you see Johnson trying to find it by him, and yeah, just jumping up in the air. There's not a lot of room. I'm sure that window closed really quickly in front of Jerome Johnson, so now you go from the holding to the incomplete, and you're in a bit of a hole here if you're the Nighthawks. The Nighthawks have scored on their last five possessions, four touchdowns and a field goal. First time they've been really behind the change like this. Second and 20, another deflection. Yurik Jones, who won an IFL title in this building with Northern Arizona two years ago. Like he's doing the Jacksonville. He's got the shark fin going. He's, he's certainly <laughs> acclimating to his new surroundings very well. Oh, he's ready to go. And this time you, you see him rushing a bit more toward the outside to allow that blitzer to come in through the middle, but still able to get that right hand up as Johnson was looking for his man out of the backfield, Terry, on the left side. So now third and 20 for this Nighthawks offense. I would not say Yurik Jones qualifies as a, a baby shark by any no, means no. of the imagination. Six, seven, three hundred. Third and 20. Blitz comes from Anthony Johnson Sr. A step up and a run for Jerome Johnson. Keeps going and picks up almost all those 20 yards. A 16-yard gain. He slides inside the 20. And Johnson a little bit slow to get up. As the Nighthawks will have a fourth and four decision to make at the Jacksonville 19. And Johnson quickly helped up and off the field. Here's another look. Yeah, it looked like toward the tail end of the run he was grabbing something. Nice pass protection by Terry to allow the lane. And you see him start to pull up, grabbing that left side. And that's not a good sign for the Nighthawks. A big pickup, but you see as he just comes to a slide there to end the play, that he is certainly in some discomfort. And he grabbed it, as you're right, Justin, before the actual slide there, and that means Joe Mancuso enters the fray. We'll see if he does when we come back because it's the end of the third quarter and a fourth and four for the Nighthawks when we return. Vegas 32, Jacksonville 19 at the end of three quarters.
start of the fourth quarter where Vegas leads Jacksonville 32-19. There's a look at the backup quarterback, Joe Mancuso, who started three games last year for the Nighthawks before a season-ending knee injury. He's fully rehabbed and back. He just barely lost out on the starting job to Jerome Johnson and now pressing the service to start this fourth quarter. Johnson hurt on the final play of the third, and with Vegas up 13, it's a fourth and four. Mancuso is incomplete. He can't link up with Quentin Randolph. A great break on the ball by Caleb Ham to knock that away. Here's a look at the injury, Justin, as we ended the third quarter. Yeah, Jerome Johnson crossing midfield, and you see the hand goes on that left upper leg there. Starts to pull up a bit as he enters that slide and then walked off the field to end the third quarter. And in comes Joe Mancuso, a guy that you know, we talked about how close that quarterback competition was. Certainly, head coach Mike Davis still has confidence in his backup to get things done. And there were three guys brought in, all of whom started multiple games in the IFL last year. George Reyna was also part of that competition, but he's been sidelined with a shoulder injury and on short-term IR. Jacksonville takes over and are right in this game. Logan Wright burrows forward for a three-yard pickup, and you can just feel that the tenor of this game has changed. The good news, though, is that Jerome Johnson is back on the bench next to the backup Joe Mancuso. And he did right after that walk on his own power back to the bench, so it wasn't didn't appear to be anything super serious, but him being on the bench is certainly a good sign for Jerome. And two quarterbacks consulting with each other right now. Jacksonville a chance to make this a one-score game. We're down by 20 earlier. Blunt with a big hole, shakes away Calhoun and dives forward. Big hit in the secondary, and that results in a flag. Will be half the distance to the goal after that as Roderick Chapman came up to make a really big hit. And Blunt a little bit slow to get up for Jacksonville. And we've talked a little bit on the foul, penalty call here. Number three of your defense. 15 yards in the run. Automatic first down. And Mike Davis is arguing he didn't give himself up. He was a runner diving forward. Yeah, we've talked a little bit about the, the cat and mouse between Blunt and Calhoun. This time he shakes Calhoun for a couple of extra yards. And as he kind of slides down there, you see Chapman in with that late hit. And that's enough for the flag on the back end. Turning point of this game, it was 32-12 Vegas. Jacksonville had a fourth and goal from the 10-yard line and got it to get within two scores. Now they have first and goal at the Nighthawk 9. Pitch right side. Solomon, nowhere to go. Despite not playing it 100%, Gabe McCoy is right there again, along with Jerry Garner to make the stop for no game. And we've talked a lot about Solomon today. We talked about the two touchdowns he has in the past game. You mentioned that turning point where he was able to find some open space in the back of the end zone for that second touchdown. They've had some opportunities in the run game for him, but this one going nowhere. Gabe McCoy all over that one for the Nighthawks. 32-19 Vegas on top of Jacksonville looking for a 2-0 start after an upset win in Arizona last week. While Jacksonville looking for their first win as an IFL team. Blunt running away from Garner. He just got rid of it. Garner was all over him. Calhoun giving chase as well. And the Nighthawks once again trying to bend but not break in their own red zone. That's the second time we've seen Blunt kind of trip over the turf or something there and you see the fake and Garner just homing in on him right there. And yeah, he just trips up and throws it away. But on the back end, the Nighthawks were solid defensively because it was double coverage on the only receiver that was on that side. Solomon split to the near side in forward motion. Third and goal. Blunt knocked down. Lee Autry got the big paw up. And he learned well from Eric Jones on the other side of Jacksonville, who had a couple of pass deflections. And it's the second straight possession that the Nighthawks have forced a fourth and goal from the 10 for Jacksonville. Ben, don't break has to be the mantra right now for the Sharks, or for the Nighthawks defense, excuse me, and we'll see if the Sharks can convert again on a critical third down. Fourth down. Uh, Jerome Johnson, Joe Mancuso, the two quarterbacks looking on. Fourth and goal from just inside the 10. And the receivers came too far across the line of scrimmage in forward motion. The officials usually give them a little bit of leeway with that in the IFL. All stars, pretty offense number six, five yard penalty, fourth down. Solomon called for the false start. 11.58 to go in the game. Jacksonville down two scores. And quarterback Connor Blunt, he's been solid today. He's took a lot of big hits, though. 9 of 17, 112 yards, two touchdowns, one pick. 
And if you remember back to that last fourth down sequence for the Sharks, that came after a couple of penalties brought them back. They were still able to overcome that. So again, they moved back, but an opportunity here to get right back in this game and make it a one score game. Fans making noise on fourth and goal. Blunt hit as he throws. Intercepted. Chapman in the end zone. Nighthawks get the stand, but there's a flag down very late. And Jacksonville thinks this is roughing the passer. And it is. Wow. Mikel Calhoun, who's been so good all game, with a roughing the passer on Connor Blunt to give Jacksonville new life. Yeah, it was going to be such a turning point for this Nighthawks team, but you see Calhoun there getting up a bit high, and as he went over to head coach Mike Davis, he saw Mike Davis motioning, saying, you just got to stop, you got to stop. And he just wasn't able to. And on the back end, of course, the Nighthawks get the pick, but it's wiped away, and a fresh set of downs here inside the 10-yard line for the Sharks. He was so right, didn't have to do it. It was helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact. The timing of the hit was clean, just hit him way too high. And Jacksonville, I mean, cats have nine lives. I don't know how many lives sharks have, but <laughs> Jacksonville's still alive. They just get the snap off on first to goal. Blunt on the throwback. It's incomplete. Oh, how about that hit? It'll draw a flag. Helmets go flying. And now Roderick Chapman gets his second penalty of the drive as Anthony Johnson Sr. took a massive hit up high. First and foul, defense number three. After just to the goal, automatic first foul. Now, been a frustrating sequence of the Nighthawks on defense. Fans voicing their displeasure, but those are calls that the refs will make all day. And here's the hit. And you saw head coach Mike Davis say that was the chest. It was the chest. But of course, if you lean with that helmet, let's see here. Yeah, a solid hit. The helmet comes off. Perhaps a little bit, looks a little bit worse than it actually was, but a, still a penalty that. The Nighthawks need to clean up. Six penalties today, two on this drive, and yet another reset on a first and goal for Jacksonville. Inside Gibb with a full head of steam. Wright can only get about a yard. Gabe McCoy loses his hat in the process. Yards, even for the bulldozer of a running back in Logan Wright, Justin, they have not been easy to come by today. No, they haven't, but this is certainly the spot on the field that they're going to feature him. They want those short yarded situations to go through Logan Wright. Hasn't had the success at all areas of the field today. Had a couple of catches out of the backfield, but we saw it on the last time they got down in goal to go. That's what they went with, and we'll see if they go with it again. 11 carries, 22 yards for Logan Wright. Another inside give. Again, the Nighthawks stand tall dj ford makes the tackle that time a little misdirection brian smith jr though with no opening and it's third and goal so they switch it up they go from logan wright to brian smith and smith trying to work his way back to the middle but a solid tackle by dj ford stopping him at the two yard line and again another critical down for this nighthawks defense he talked about all the lives the sharks have can they make use of one of them here and get some points Third and goal, Jacksonville ball on the doorstep, down 13 with 9.25 to play. Blunt to the air, too high. Looking to use his 6-2 target, Samori on Terry, but a great job by the Las Vegas native Bryce Hampton, who had an interception earlier today and made that a really tough catch. We saw a similar play in the previous quarter where Blunt tried to hit Terry and it was just a bit too high. And I think the same situation here, just a bit too high as the pass goes over the head of Bryce Hampton and the head of Terry. But an interesting choice to go to the air in that situation. A drive that has felt like it started in February with how long this thing has gone. <laughs> 8.43 to go. Jacksonville down two touchdowns, fourth and goal at the Nighthawk two. Blunt to give. Right is in. Power running by Logan Wright got just enough. Jacksonville within seven. It's 32-25. And there's what you come to expect from Logan Wright pounding it in. And it looks like some tempo here as they want to get this point after going, recognizing the time on the clock. Great call, too, by you, Justin. It is the running clock in the IFL. 8.20 to go. And with some purpose out there and going quick, Onate gets the PAT. 
how things have changed inside the Dollar Loan Center. Nighthawks were up 20, now down just six with 8.20 to go in the game. 32-26 will step aside. Nighthawks look to respond on offense. We'll see which quarterback takes the field when we return. The big question, Vegas Nighthawk fans wondering who will take the next snap at quarterback. Joe Mancuso has his helmet on as the Nighthawks' 20-point lead's been cut down to six. 8.20 to go, a 32-26 lead for Vegas. As we're back inside the Dollar Loan Center, Jerome Johnson got hurt on a third-down scramble. Final play of the third quarter as this kickoff hits once again the underside of the ceiling. Third time that's been hit by kicker Frankie Onate, and it will be Joe Mancuso who came in. It was a really top spot, Justin, to come in. He throws an incompletion on fourth down. Now he's back in there after appearing in 11 games a season ago. Started three of them and was very, very good before a season-ending knee injury in Week 10. Yeah, and again, we talked about that quarterback competition. I think they still have confidence in him to take this the rest of the way. They have a lead, but they want to add on to it here and really seal this game away. And Mancuso is going to have to make some plays down the stretch. It was Joe Mancuso who had a really good college career, six years at Richmond, graduated in 2021. In the big spot right now, eight to go, team up by a score, and he fires a bullet to Caleb Holly, just shy of the sticks. Wrestle to the turf, and after multiple flags were caught in the Nighthawks defense on the last possession, now a flag comes down for a late hit, driving Holly into the turf there, I believe, by Caleb Ham. After the play, personal foul, number 21 in the defense, 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So the completion for Mancuso on his first attempt on this drive, and there you see Holly going backwards, but slammed down at the end of that by Ham. And you have to know the nature of this game with how many penalties are on the other side. You have to be aware of that if you're on the defensive side of things to keep things clean the rest of the way. It is the 16th accepted penalty today as OC Hurtishin looks on. Mancuso. In his first full drive, first and goal at the nine. Inside give, there's Torian Taylor. Had his first career touchdown earlier today, but can't get much. Good job of contained to the boundary by Harrison Poole, who led the team with 11 tackles last week. The former Mercer Bear at the FC level makes that stop a gain of one. Strong game so far for Terry. And, or excuse me, Taylor, as he goes out to the left side there, getting toward the five-yard line, looking to push the pace here. I gave him a couple extra yards after that lurch forward, a gain of three, and it's second to goal at the six. Nighthawks by six, 32-26, 7.05 to go in the home opener. Second quarterback of the game, Joe Mancuso in the gun. Blitz comes, picked up well. Mancuso takes off with some space. Flag is down from the backside, but for now, Mancuso is in. The question is, will it stand? Holding. Offense number 77, 10 yard penalty, second down. It will not. Moses Mallory calling for the hold. A great job in blitz pickup there by Torian Taylor. Justin, but as Mancuso was climbing the pocket, looked where that hold came from. Yeah, let's take a look here. 
right guard number 77 working on number 99 there and as Mancuso steps up he doesn't allow the defender to go there with him and he falls down he gets the holding call and that moves the Nighthawks back but to your point a great blitz pick up there by Taylor he had one earlier on Jerome Johnson's final play of the game to this point he's been really good in that aspect of the game backed up now to the 16 yard line on second and goal six and a half to go from the dollar loan center free blitzer but Mancuso finds Randolph nice shimmy shake look at Randolph inside the five down to the four on a pickup of 12 sets up third and goal for the Nighthawks Quentin Randolph juking guys in a phone booth there as he gets toward the end zone you see the catch oh I'm going right that's two guys I'm going back left that's another guy and he tries to work his way into the end zone but stopped at the four yard line great elusiveness by Randolph there in a big spot and a nice play by Mancuso to find him open in the middle Nighthawks by six with under six to go third and goal from the four read option it's the give powering forward Taylor is in Nighthawks touchdown as they respond in a big way for Taylor had a 10 yard rushing touchdown earlier in the game picks up another one here and a nice push by the offensive lineman Kevin too as he realized that Taylor was trying to fight for those extra couple of inches into the end zone you see 52 get in there man and he pushes him right into the end zone for the touchdown and a big response drive by the Nighthawks Kevin too hard-nosed New Yorker at least I assume he's hard-nosed if he's from New York <laughs> Saratoga yeah, Springs D2 guy at a pace university first year Nighthawk he's the only newcomer on the offensive line and a great offensive line coach that Hawks have in Kyle Moore Brown who was a guy who won two AFL titles in the AFL Hall of Fame so it takes a lot to crack that starting offensive line in Vegas and the PAT here is good we get the holder a Macy a Macias I should say the kicker banged into after that kick and with the Nighthawks right now up by 12 they See what they elect to do after this. Point after is good. Personal foul, number 22 on the defense. That'll be placed in the bank. Media timeout. Timeout on the field. Nighthawks will put that in the bank. That means it'll be enforced after the ensuing kickoff as we step aside. Quentin Randolph, a big catch to set up this run by Torian Taylor in his pro debut. Two rushing touchdowns. Nighthawks by 13. Crunch time from the Dollar Loan Center, 39-26 lead for Vegas. Nighthawks had led by 20. Jacksonville got back-to-back -to -back touchdowns and had knocked Nighthawks starting quarterback Jerome Johnson out of the game, but Torian Taylor with his second touchdown in his first game at the, as a pro gets the huge score. Nighthawks with a little bit more breathing room as the kickoff's taken by Cameron Solomon. 
First hit on the play by DJ Ford. It's time to take a look at our Clark Law Group play of the game. And the Nighthawks got things started through the air earlier in the second quarter with this play from Jerome Johnson to Caleb Holly. Yeah, Caleb Holly on the right side, finding an open spot on the defense. And Johnson sticking in through pressure and delivering a strike to his open receiver. And that gave the Nighthawks a 14 to 5 lead at that point in the game. And an excellent play by Holly. One of two receiving touchdowns for Caleb Holly today, who has been excellent. Four catches, 28 yards. He and Quentin Randolph, the two leading returners from last year, have combined for nine catches and 85 total yards, two touchdowns. Now the Nighthawks' goal here is to force Jacksonville to take as much time off the clock as possible, up by two scores. It is running clock in the IFL, and an easy shot down the sideline. Is that caught? It is. It's tipped and then brought in. I and mean, just an easy release down the sideline by Blunts, and he connects with his top wideout to Morion Terry, even though Bryce Hampton got a piece of it. Well, Blunt leaves this ball short. Hampton is able to get the right hand on it, but he doesn't knock it down. He just tips it behind him, and great concentration by Terry to then go over the wall, get the catch, and secure it for a fresh set of downs. Especially battling with the fans down there front row. That is so good by Terry. The right idea by Hampton, because no, normally when you play football, you knock it kind of that way. It's going to be out of bounds. Now a lob to the end zone, and no signal yet. It looked like it was broken up, but there's still a fight for the ball. And this is dual possession. That will be a catch and a touchdown for Jacksonville. Still no signal. Oh, those guys are tied up over there. That is an old school battle for the ball, and they say dual possession touchdown. As Brian Smith Jr. wins that battle in the corner. Well, if you're Vegas, you're trying to force as much time to bleed as possible, but that's a perfect response for the Jacksonville Sharks. We're getting a close look in the in arena scoreboard here, and it looks like it just kind of hovers over the shin of Terry, and it never really touches the ground, which is incredible to think how much those guys were battling over there. The extra point unit is already lined up for Jacksonville. They want to get this thing going, but as you see, head coach Mike Davis there, he wants to take another look. You can see the frustration on head coach Mike Davis's face, kind of in disbelief that the officials didn't see what he saw, which was the ball hitting the ground. Working on James Caesar, who was in great coverage. Here's another look. It looks like it makes contact with the wall, but seeing if it ends up on the ground at some point, hard to tell from that angle. Here's another look. that look on the inside at first it wasn't easy to tell but you see a ball hit the wall looks like there's contact with the ground too to Mori Ontario who had just had the catch on the sideline the previous play up against Bryce Hampton now goes against James Caesar and yeah, this is such a tough one for the officials but remember they did call it a touchdown so they have to see something here that can overrule that call and that look right there I mean it may hit the ground but does he have both hands on it already is the question because he might have possession you see he's got his arm under the, <laughs> under the leg they're, I mean they're playing twister over there in the some, corner uh, of the end zone yeah I mean that was I'm talking Julian Edelman Super Bowl yeah uh, you know as good of a catch as you could possibly make. I mean, it was an unbelievable effort. And as much as Mike Davis was convinced that what he saw was that ball hit the ground, officials now have to decide if there is enough evidence there to overturn it. I mean, not qu I wouldn't say quite David Tyree. I mean, that, that's obviously yeah. always the ultimate in incredible catches but that was still something special Oh, a circus catch nonetheless by Terry and just think of how many things this bounces off of the wall a couple of legs there and it's hard to tell if he can even see it when he goes down there and feels it just to pin it against his leg with the ultimate concentration there as Caesar was trying to knock that thing away Gary Reed our head referee taking a long look at this <laughs> Mike Davis wondering why it's taking so long 
And how about that entire drive, too, by the Sharks? The play before that on the wall by Terry. A couple of circus catches by Terry. You talk about getting good fortune. And I think what Mike Davis is arguing is because that ball touched the wall, it should be automatically out of bounds. That, you know, if there's no possession, and again, that's what we're trying to confirm here. If there's no possession and the ball hits the wall, well, then you, you, know, you can't just... For, for instance, you couldn't just like let the ball carry him off the wall and use it as kind of a ricochet and, and bring yeah. the ball if you did not previously have possession. And that's what Mike Davis is arguing right now should be the case. That should be a dead ball at that spot. You can obviously go in and over the wall if you're a receiver. Yeah, so interesting replay review here. Mike Davis still yelling over to the referees, seeing what's going on. 39-26, the lead for Vegas. And Mike Davis. You can see him pounding on the wall there. Said it hit the wall. Using his second challenge. He lost one earlier. And you can get a good look at it there amidst the battle for the ball. Looking like it does take a little bounce off of that wall. But obviously, in such a tight game in the fourth quarter here, want to make sure you get everything right. Here's After Gary review, Reed. the rule on the field has changed. Incomplete pass. It just took a while to get them the replay they wanted. And the ruling on the field has changed. Now, Jacksonville had the PAT unit on the field. And their head coach, Jason Gibson, is he, he's screaming at his guys. He's like, hey, it was an incomplete pass. We have to get off the field. We need the offense to come back here. It seemed like none of the players on the field really knew or could hear what the call was because they were all lining up for that extra point. And what a bizarre sequence. I think part of it, too, in years past here at the DLC, the officials have had a like an iPad, a tablet they've been able to look at on the replays. They don't have that, at least for game one, so they're having to use the, the Jumbotron here in the building. It just took a while for them to get the look that they wanted to see to confirm that ball did hit the wall and it was dead at that spot. As a result of all that, had one circus catch to set up this uh, set up this goal to go situation. Now they have to make sure the down and distances are are all correct. So Mike Davis is saying it's fourth down. Jacksonville saying this should be third down. Down and distance has third down. A lot to sort out right now with 3:20 to go in the game. They will back it up to the seven which is where the ball originally was. And there's now an official's timeout. I have to think what they're doing is they, they have to make sure the down and distance is right here. And just thinking back to that sequence, trying to remember after that circus catch by Terry that got them down there in the first place. A lot to figure out here for these officials. You know, it's bizarre too is that Mike Davis is saying I don't know where, he's getting fourth down here and now the officials have changed it here to fourth down although I thought it was I mean that was a first and goal play here's a look at the next home game by the way that will be a week from Friday by week next week for the Nighthawks Friday April 12th at 7 p.m. against San Antonio tickets available at nighthawksfootball.com inside the dollar loan center yeah I was wondering like where I don't know where they got fourth down from because this has only been a two-play drive. I mean, Terry hit was hit on that pass by Blunt, the 37, the crazy catch down the sideline, brought it down to the seven. Then that last play was the one they were being reviewed. That was first and goal. I guess that speaks to how long that review was. We uh, all forgot what down so. distance it was. So. Uh, they got it right. It is second and goal. Maybe, maybe Mike was, you know, as they were unsure of what the down was, maybe he was just trying to Trying to get them to move that down uh, even further to fourth. Well, it is second down. They've got it right. We're finally back underway. But before we can do that, a flag is down to a false start. False start. Offense number three. Five-yard penalty. Second down. And it's on Logan Wright. Yeah, Wright lined up on the right side of the formation. Gave just a little bit of a flinch there. It'll be just off your screen to the right as those two guys are in motion. But... Made that little flinch. 
And that was enough. Part of this, too, it goes back to the start of the drive and the outlook for Vegas to force as much time to go off the clock. Jacksonville has all three timeouts and the one-minute warning down by two touchdowns. Now we're down to 3.15 in the game. Jacksonville still down 13. Blunt with a deep shot, but it's intercepted! And watch out, Bryce Hampton still going! In his first home game, Bryce Hampton has a pick six. There are multiple flags behind the play, but regardless, a turnover for Hampton and the Nighthawks. An excellent play by Hampton to read that as Blunt just kind of hung it out there on the right side. And Guy, the offensive lineman for the Sharks, went down in a heap. So looks to be something on the return here against the Nighthawks, but to your point, coming after the interception and a change of possession nonetheless. Well, a lot to sort out here, too. Unfortunately, the head ref, Gary Reed, he got trucked on that return. He lost his shoe in the process. But Gary gets helped up. You also have the offensive lineman, Gee. You can see him on your screen down in a ton of pain as we take another look. So there's the interception by Hampton reading that play as they look to go to Terry again. And <laughs> you see our cameraman trying to make hey, his way not out of the way, job. too. Hey, it's hard enough for these guys to get out of the way without a big camera on their shoulders, let alone with one. So an excellent sidestep there. After the reception, there. during the return, personal, personal foul, blind side block, number 10. Forced half the distance, first down. They call Gabe McCoy for an illegal blindside block. He slow to get up. Good to see that Gary Reed, our head ref, is okay. And usually you know, the cheerleaders are on the kind of on the backside, so they had to scamper. They had to jump over the wall. Everyone had to be on high alert on this one as we take a look from the end zone now of Hampton's interception. You can see everyone scrambling out of the way. Let's see if we can get a look at this blindside block. And there it is on the left side of your screen. You saw McCoy come in on Gee. And off to move things back, but again, the Nighthawks with the ball after the interception nonetheless. It negates the pick six, what would have been for Hampton. At the same time, though, Nighthawks with 2.45 to go can run a good amount of clock here. You'd expect Jacksonville to start taking timeouts as Mancuso slips a would-be tackler. He's known more as a pocket passer, but showing he still has the mobility to make guys miss picks up eight yards on first down that's a pretty smart play call too because in this instance if you're Jacksonville you're expecting to go heavy and stop the run so you put everyone on Taylor there but Mancuso slips the ball behind and he's able to pick up a good chunk of yards there himself so moving the ball are the Nighthawks and certainly taking some time off of this clock and they don't have to snap it next until about 152 left since it is running clock decision has to be made for Jacksonville and head coach Jason Gibson how soon do you start taking timeouts you're down two touchdowns Mancuso to throw under pressure oh he lost the football the one thing you couldn't do in this situation is turn it over and it looks like Jacksonville has it and they do recovered on the play by Marcus Bragg with 151 to go I don't know about the decision to pass this ball when you just had a big rush down to get to one yard to go to get the first down. You see he's spun down there, loses the football. Jacksonville picks it up. It just seems a bit over aggressive at this point, up by 13 points. You have everything going for you, and you were just a yard away from picking up a first down to really go a long way to seal this game. But you, again, you're given another life to this Sharks team. That fumble forced by Jordan Cole, the blitzing linebacker off the bench. And once again, the Sharks not out of this. Quick throw to the left side, hauled in by Solomon on a short pickup. Now, you could argue that because of the running clock here, you're totally fine with pass plays. An incompletion doesn't hurt you because the clock still runs. It's just the turnover is the worst case scenario. I'm sure Mancuso knows that. Everybody on the Nighthawk offense knows that. But the mistake is made. And now Jacksonville tries to get one more play off before the one-minute warning. Still have all three timeouts. Second and five. Another quick throw this time to Terry right side. High leap. Oh, right over Hampton as he picks up the first down. And now the clock stops as we go to the final minute of the game. And this fourth quarter's had a little bit of everything. 
Now, how about this leap by Tamori on Terry, the former Seminole out of Florida State, shows off the hops our final minute. When we come back, Nighthawks up 39-26 on top of Jacksonville. One minute to go from the Dollar Loan Center in Las Vegas. Nighthawks 39, Jacksonville Sharks 26. Every time, though, Justin, we felt like the Sharks are out of this game. They've gotten a big play in their favor. And in the world of the IFL, one minute plus all three timeouts is an eternity. First to goal at the six. Blunt scrambles, fires, incomplete. Looking for Terry, a crucial breakup by James Caesar. That's how the final minute of this game starts. Yeah, like you said, it has been at every turning point in this game in favor of the Sharks. They've just continued to find ways to make plays. On this particular one, I thought, you know, Blunt could have taken off and scrambled himself for a few yards, but he elects to pass it in the end zone and a nice pass breakup by the Nighthawks to keep this a 13-point game. Second and goal at the six-yard line. Been a fun home opener for the Nighthawks. Got off to a... 20 point lead, but they've been hanging on for dear life ever since had their starting quarterback Jerome Johnson knocked out of the game with injury Blunt's left side and his receivers ran into each other there Solomon and Terry ended up in the same spot third and goal now with 53 seconds still to go and we do have the normal timing rules if you're new to the IFL final minute of each half the clock will stop after every play unlike the other 58 minutes you have at the game yeah, certainly do the advantage of the Sharks. We, you know, they've, they've had some lengthy drives here in the second half, which, of course, they've been looking to avoid, but needing points now down 13 with under a minute to go. Fans make noise inside the Dollar Loan Center. Those who've come out on this Easter Sunday. Third and goal. Blunt. End zone. It's hauled in. Solomon again. The hat trick, his third touchdown, and once again, Jacksonville within one score. When you need a big play, dial up number six if you're the Jacksonville Sharks. Three touchdowns on the day for Cameron Solomon. And Blunt trusting his receiver going to the back corner of the end zone. There's three Nighthawks there, but he still finds a way to complete it. And the Sharks are not done yet. Very important PAT for a multitude of reasons is up and good. Onate makes it a six-point game, 49 seconds to go. As Cameron Solomon looks on, he had 32 touchdowns a season ago, led the NAL, did not play last week, and it's obvious his presence gives Jacksonville just a completely new dimension on offense. Yeah, and you see Blunt, every time there's a key situation, he's looking his way, and that is the security blanket for him. He wants to go to him in big situations, and we've seen some of the circus catches and attempts from Tamori on Terry, but when they need it most, it's Cameron Solomon. And now, if you're the Nighthawks, you have to find a way to get a first down. Jacksonville still with all three of their timeouts. This one's certainly not over yet. Seven catches, 84 yards, three TDs. Yeah, you're so right. It's a situation where that's why in the IFL, too, you can't, even if you take three runs and stop the clock each time and then punt it away, well, that doesn't exist in the IFL. 
So that's where there's no sure thing and you're only up six. You have a really good kicker on the other side too for Jacksonville in Onate and fascinated to see what the strategy will be. You would assume a squib here deep from Onate, but it's a guy who already has hit on a deuce earlier. I think I would go for the squib here. The two points I would doesn't too. get you within the field goal, so you're still going to need that touchdown. So I, I think taking the chance to try and get something uh, to get it back into your possession might be the move here for the Sharks. And if you go for a deuce here and you miss, you give the opposing team the ball at midfield here. They will set up. Looks like the true onside kick. Coming from Onate. High boot, but it's over everybody. Into the first row. Look at Quentin Randolph. <laughs> He's celebrating like that fan's part of the team. That was a good catch over there. And that's where the Nighthawks will get the ball. That's the hard part of traditional onside kicks in the IFL. You just don't have the sort of room you do, say, in the college or NFL game. No, and you see a great attempt. He pops it all the way up in the air, but it just goes a little too far right into the first row as uh, Quentin Randolph celebrates with the fan at the tail end there. So they took the risk. It didn't pay off. But again, they still have three timeouts. So if they can force a stop here and keep the Nighthawks off of the scoreboard on this drive they have an opportunity well the other thing to keep in mind the way the IFL scoring works just because the Nighthawks get a field goal here does not mean the game's totally over nine points is still technically a one possession game as Mancuso keeps will be brought down after a short pickup by Jordan Cole first time out here by Jacksonville of three again to recap that with the scoring let's say the Nighthawks get a field goal it's 42 33 Jacksonville could get a touchdown and a PAT and if there's any time left they could then try to do something and sue and kick off and make it for a nine-point possession which they've already done once today so certainly once. in play 43 seconds to go in this game Nighthawks 39 Sharks 33 now these are the sorts of games though Nighthawks lost a couple of heartbreakers at home last year Mike Davis in the preseason said his goal was for his team to take care of business at home in a really tough competitive western conference the goal is to go eight no at home went just four and four on home turf with a couple of heartbreaking last second losses a season ago and the home opener here they want to do right by the fans here at the dlc they're a couple plays away from sealing this one if they can get a first down and Cuso has played the entire fourth quarter in relief another design give as he runs into that wall tried to spin out of jordan cole former Simo Redhawk. And gets maybe one down to the 11-yard line. From here, it's a 27-yard field goal. And you do have a really good kicker in Kevin Macias, who's been perfect on PATs today. He's three for five on the early season in field goals. After hitting the game winner from 32 at the buzzer last week to shock Arizona, that certainly got everybody's attention throughout the league. Vegas moved to fourth in the coaches' poll this week out of 16 teams. And now trying to consolidate that big road win, back it up with a home win here this week. 38 seconds left. Jacksonville can stop the clock one more time. If the Nighthawks pick up the first down, they have to get to the four. If they pick up the first down, it's game over. Third and seven. Taylor, the give. Big hole. Taylor, first down. That's the game for Vegas. Torian Taylor inside the five to seal the Nighthawk win. You know, it's so interesting with these read options. I feel like oftentimes you give it to the running back to set up that quarterback keeper. But with Mancuso lately, he's been the one keeping it, almost setting up the traditional rush there from Taylor. And he does just enough to pick up the first down and help seal this game for the Vegas Nighthawks. The shifty back getting inside the five near the goal line, almost into the end zone as he stretches out that left arm. But he did his job sealing this one for the Nighthawks. What a game in his pro debut. Torian Taylor, not a big guy by any means. 5'7", 180 pounds out of Division II. Tuskegee played there for five seasons. Didn't play any pro ball last year. Eight carries, 43 yards, two touchdowns, and has clinched it with a 10-yard run here. As the headsets come off over on the Vegas side, and last time out just taken by Jacksonville. Now, it used to be in the IFL, you had to advance the ball forward, but they have since gotten rid of that rule. They got rid of it last year, so it used to be even without timeouts, you still had to move the ball forward. But here they can just take a knee. And depending on the play clock here, that will be all she wrote. And it will. 
The Nighthawks had to survive a scare. At one point, looked like this would be a coast job up by 20. Jacksonville with a great fight in the second half to make it a tight game. But ultimately, the Nighthawks, despite losing their starting quarterback to injury in the game, come in and hang on a six-point victory, 39-33, to go to 2-0.